I am QCOM, and with me I have DJ Shamrock. I what's have up? So, um, Demos Fox. Hey, what's going on? And with us are two special guests, <laughs> uh, Michael Brokoff. Is it Brokoff? Uh, Brokoff. Brokoff. All right. And uh, Lauren Malake. Lauren Malake. <laughs> As soon as you said your last name, I totally lost it. I know, it's all right. Great job. <laughs> um, but yes, go ahead, every pony. And uh, if you have questions for these two wonderful people, you can go ahead and just type in uh, slash MSG space Trixie space your question. So basically, just like you would requesting, just ask a question instead. These two uh, are both are the producer and director of the Bronicon documentary that is joined by John Delancey and Lauren Faust and Tara Strong. So welcome. Thank you. Thanks. So first of all, our first question, at least that I've written up, um, how did you uh, how did you get started in MLP? Did did uh, John? interest you into that did you just sort of see it become an internet phenomenon or well this is mike um i've been a friend of john's for for quite a while and about a month or two ago here i was at his house and and we were having dinner and he said um do you know anything about my little pony and i said no not really he goes do you know who the audience for that show is and i said yeah isn't it little girls and he goes, actually, you would be wrong. <laughs> and uh, he started to tell me about kind of the phenomena of bronies and, and what was going on in the community. And um, I thought, wow, this is really interesting. And, and so in the next couple of days, I started thinking about it and going, you know what? Uh, this is fascinating. And search, searching the net and just saying, what, what is this all about? So I went back to John and I said, John, let's make a documentary about who the bronies are. And uh, he said, uh, good idea, Let, let's go forward. And uh, from there, we, we brought in a number of people, including uh, Lauren as the director. Okay, then. There you have it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So where, where is this streaming? Where is this feed coming from? Can, it, can we look at it? Or this the feed, uh, yes. Uh you guys can go to it's a uh, ponify.me it's a p o n i f y dot m e and uh, it's Celesti Radio that's who we are and um, we broadcast all over the place whatever and uh, you can click on um, we've got a flash player if you just want to use it off the website uh, but if you have like iTunes or um, or Winamp or something like that. We also have ones that run on like an iTunes playlist uh, streaming thing. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. And just trying to. Nice. And, and we also have our we also have our chat room that's there on the site as well. So you can log into the chat room, say hello to all the zans of people that are listening to us right now. Um, <laughs> Could you can you send me that link in my little chat thing here? Yeah. Yeah, we will. Awesome. Right now. Hey, I got a question. It uses so it's a. Uh, it's an IRC client. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. An IRC. Just a basic, my fault? very basic chat client. Yeah. That, uh, okay. There we go. You can, you can use it straight off the website. Um, got like it. Okay. That link. Cool. Wait, we got a question here from uh, from somebody in the chat. Uh, or Mike, uh, what's your opinion of the Brony community in general? Go ahead, Lauren. You want me to go? Mm -hmm. um, so I was kind of blown away when Mike first started talking to me about this. I, you know, I, I grew up with My Little Pony, and it was clearly something different <laughs> when I was a kid. And um, I just started like, you know, I knew a little bit, but not much. I mean, really, it was kind of brand new to me, too, as well. Mm -hmm. And I looked up online, and then I saw, like, the first thing I saw was Fox News smashing in these people, and I'm like, "What? This is what was going on here?" And they were like, po "They were suggesting that they could be responsible for the economic meltdown." And I thought, "This, this is ridiculous. What the hell's going on here?" And so, and then I started, and then you know, and then I started like really looking at what these people stood for, and it's like 
wow, Fox News found these people threatening enough to like start a smear campaign, which was incredible. So I was like, all right, I, I probably like these guys right off the bat. You know, <laughs> they don't like them. And then I, what was interesting to me is that, I mean, I'm, I, you know, I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area, so it's like my, I'm, you know, my parents were hippies and stuff, and and I really liked the message of what everyone stood for, and I'm like, this is like, this is pretty amazing. I mean, no wonder why Fox News doesn't like these people because it's like they're not about the materialism; they're about the friendship and you know being connected with other people and and that value system. I mean, mm. it it I, I thought it was amazing, and the more I go into it, I'm like, this is sort of you know a birth of a new consciousness. I mean, not to sound hippie-like, but it it reminds me a lot of that. I mean, you know, minus a lot of other elements, but yeah. I, I'm completely inspired. Yeah, there's there's too mm. much hate in the world. We we need a little bit of love and tolerance right now. You know, <laughs> we need to go no, back. I love to that happy message. Way. I mean, well, you know, love and tolerate the shit out of you. It's, <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, that's you know, up in the Bay Area, it's all the Dalai Lama, you know, and compassion, and then. I'll love and tolerate the shit out of you. It's kind of the same message. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mike? Um, essentially, this it just I thought this is a great opportunity to learn about something new, learn about this kind of culture that that is growing, mm-hmm. a group of people that is is growing, and I, this is kind of I'm like this is something that you know everyone should be interested in and as i began to talk to to people i realized there were you know huge misconceptions uh, about you know who these people were who these fans were and i thought well we we need to do something that shows you know who they really are and and mm-hmm. uh, that's what we're doing yeah nice okay um i'm going to uh, get a few questions from the chat now um <laughs> these are mostly these are um, mostly just sort of little Gen N questions. Um, muffins, both Muffins and Zask you are both asking, uh, who is your favorite pony in the series? Uh, well, <laughs> mine. I, I'm going to say mine right now is uh, it has to be Rainbow Dash. Yes, my man. <laughs> <laughs> Even though Terror uh, thinks it should be Twilight, it should be Twilight. But I was like, nope, it's Rainbow Dash. Yeah, Terror Ter- Ter- told us that it had to be Twilight. So, but uh, actually, I think mine is Twilight. So uh, I do like Spike yeah. also. I like Spike Twilight, but I <laughs> I like Twilight, but I'm I'm kind of a little more. I'm not so book. I'm not so. I don't know. Uh, so. I was uh I've been involved in broadcasting for a while now and I love film. I love doing TV and all that kind of stuff and really getting into a lot of those things. And one of the things I've done uh the most with with film is doing documentary stuff. So I was really interested um when we got the opportunity to interview you guys because I wanted to see um one I guess would be what uh, what really got you into? Are you are you really based around film? Is that a lot of stuff that you do, and you do mainly documentaries that you decided to do this, or was this sort of a, an aside thing? You said let's do a documentary for this. You know, we've done some other things because um, there's a lot of people that I know who, would, as bronies, have been wanting to do documentary stuff for the fandom, but haven't aren't necessarily in that field professionally yeah right. well, i'll go i'll go first uh okay, this is mike um i've worked you know 20 plus years in entertainment and have done everything from reality shows to documentaries including uh, like an award-winning documentary on uh, uh, that involved uh, world war ii um i actually also produced uh, john delancey and i produced a documentary together uh oh, gosh maybe eight years ago or more, uh, called Inside Area 51. So, you know, I've pretty much done it all. And uh, so whether documentary or reality or whatever it is, as a producer, it's all about, you know, getting the elements together, getting the peop- the right people together, to you know, getting the editors, the camera crews, you know, getting the financial together. And uh, so that's always, you know, just something that I love and it's a challenge. And, and whether it be this or something else, uh, you know, that's what I do. Um, so part of that was bringing in someone like Laurent as the director, um, who I think has kind of a unique vision and, and, and abilities that kind of 
really fit this subject matter. And I'll, and I'll let Lauren tell you a little bit about his background. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been working with Mike since 99, and we met at a production company. And I, don't even, I, can't, I don't even know how many shows that we've worked on together. And essentially, I mean, we were just like, you know, moved from show to show to show. And I've worked in documentary and reality as well. But, I mean, I, I must say that, like, sort of in the last few years, I've gone after projects that, um, well, well, you know, real, like I learned a lot and I don't regret anything I've learned in documentary reality, you know, for networks, because obviously, you know, you're you're being stuck in a pipeline where you're forced to perform. And, and I learned an enormous amount. But then now I'm starting to go, well, what do I want to do? And I, I'm attracted to projects that I find have a message and, and there's a passion there. And that's what I've been going after. So, um and then, like, you know, one of the projects I was really proud of is I did this, I did a documentary in Africa about these artists that were protesting a a corrupt museum, and they they staged this procession, and at the end of the procession, they, they this museum had, like, basically taken their artwork for, like, six years and was holding it sort of ransom, ransom and it was like this, and they finally got their artwork back, and they publicly, these are some of the biggest artists in Cameroon, they staged this procession, and they burned their artwork publicly, and, I, and if that's kind of the turning point in my life. I was like, oh, my God. I mean, these are real stories with people that really have messages. And I, I was just privileged to be there and be able to be a part of this and, and just to witness this. And so and that that that's moves me forward. It's sort of I've taken that with me. And when I find a community of people that are really connected and they have a message and they have something that they want to share with the world, that's strong. That's that's you know that's out of love and 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 ha- you know there's there's a humanity to it, and that 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 pulls me into any project that's like that. But there aren't a lot out there, you know. So the, when I yeah. see one, I'm like I'm totally into it. Mm-hmm. Um, in in reference to another documentary specific uh, question, there's a lot of um discussion within the or maybe not discussion but practice i guess within uh the community that does uh, of people who do documentaries and that is um a question of whether uh someone one side fiercely says you must uh be very organized have every single little thing planned location 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 know all your shots, know all of these things, and to go out and do it because time is of the essence and you don't have a lot of money most of the time when you're doing right, documentaries. Right, for sure. And then there's another aspect where people say that you should plan as little as possible and let the filming be completely organic and just go to the wherever you're going and let the locale sort of guide you in, in what you're doing. I'd like mm-hmm. to know what both of your perspectives are on that and what you're trying, which one you're looking at more for this particular documentary. Well, I can say, I can say that we're, we're planning every, every, we're trying to plan every aspect of it. But that said, I mean, you got to let the story tell its own story. You know, you can't really plan it. It's sort of like I plan and then, I basically, when I get there, I sort of throw the plan out the window because and let this, the, the story take take form organically. But if you don't plan, I mean, it's you know, it, it can take forever. And I, I did one documentary; it took me six years, and I had I had a plan, but I really went with the flow. And I, you know, and I it really taught me the value of the more prepared you are, and the more that you have an anticipation where the show, where the uh, where the storyline can go, the better for you. But at the same time it's really up to the subject. I mean, you know, we're not going to put words in people's mouths and we're not going to force them to do things they're not going to do already, you know, and, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather, you know, be a fly on a wall than, than, you know, the cinema verite thing where we're pushing people to do and say things because I I feel like that's not honest. And I, and what's more, most interesting to me is the bronies being bronies and they're so passionate and driven about what they do. I want to be, I want to be a part of that. You know, because that, that to me is what's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Mike, we have... you... No, I, I think exactly the same thing. You know, definitely from coming from the producer side, it's plan, plan, plan. You know, we want to make the, 
the best use out of every dollar that's been uh, given towards the project, budget towards the project, and uh, get the most bang for for the buck, and get you know a lot of good content in there. And so part of that has been uh, really reading every single email that has come in, um, hundreds and hundreds of emails um, with everybody's specific story, and then meeting as a group and going, okay, which storylines do we want to follow? You know, what are kind of the most interesting stories here, and 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 let's go work with those people and and see what we can get. Hmm. Sounds like someone's playing dominoes. <laughs> no, somebody. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not. Sorry, I'm not. I don't know. There it is again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I hear. I hear. That's too. me. I'm... That's that's me. I'm playing with batteries. Oh, that is. <laughs> <laughs> like playing a badass game of dominoes. <laughs> Someone's into it, man. Uh, six by six. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, um. Gosh, I knew what I was going to ask. Um. Trying to think of as many documentary specific questions that I can get out of the way. Okay. Uh, what? Uh, I guess. Do you know? Do you know how long? You're, you're looking at being in uh, production as well as um, how long you're wanting the documentary to be. I know that's a very difficult question because you don't really know until you do it. But oh, part um, of it, part of it is the the documentary will be feature length, which usually means around ninety, at least ninety minutes, right? You know, maybe mm-hmm. up to one twenty. Um, it really just depends on how, how everything comes together and how it plays. And I mean, we certainly have so much material to, you know, it's been a little rough going, okay, there's so many things and so many <laughs> facets of it. Like, what do we concentrate on and how do you kind of narrow it down? Um, so that's, we've just been doing so much research and, and, and making lists and, you know, the best music, the best art best you know fan videos the 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 most interesting people the you know there's a lot to cover um the and you know plus having uh lauren and tara available to us you know the history even uh lauren sent us the other day the bible that she created initially when she had you know when she was creating the show that explains you know all the elements of of the universe of the show and all the characters and sample storylines and it's fascinating. It's you know, it's it's amazing stuff. So um, yes, the 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 length of the thing, you know, it probably around ninety minutes, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, but probably around ninety minutes. And then as far as production, you know, certainly um, kind of the 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 creative side, if you will, the the kind of Lawrence side wants you know a lot of as much time as possible. To right. create this, and the producer side, the practical side, <laughs> says, "Okay, guys, we gotta, you know, get this in the can, and we gotta deliver it. And we promised it, you know, hopefully by estimated by the end of uh, September uh, for the Bronies. And certainly, I've already had people go, oh, can I have it before then? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> doesn't allow much time for post production. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's pretty quick. So." Um, you know, we have to weigh those things out and make those decisions at some point to go, okay, do we spend more time getting more things or do we, and delay the, the, the delivery a little bit, or do we, you know, just go ahead and go right for it. And, you know, it's just things that you kind of feel out as you go along because you want to make the best product possible. Yeah. Right. And, you know, at yeah, the... I mean, I mean, I want to camp out with people for, you know, live with people for a couple of weeks, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. <laughs> I mean, that's me. I mean, I'm the crazy, passionate artist that wants to just like, hey, here I am, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what you eat for breakfast, you know? Let's see your parents yell at you. <laughs> Let's I see, eat explain apple why I'm sleeping in your room. I don't know. It's <laughs> great. Uh. Um, I do have a question here. I know that on both sides, both in the fandom and outside the fandom, there there have been a lot of critics in outside the fandom saying oh they shouldn't be getting this much attention inside the fandom saying why are we wasting all this time and money on this um how do you how do you guys actually handle this kind of i, I mean I'm a, negative feedback no no i'm okay with it i mean i understand people are very protective of the community and I, yeah. they should be and i totally appreciate and understand that and i i think that's a good thing and i embrace it all it's like 
I, I get what people are saying. We've been contacted by other filmmakers that are also doing their own, you know, they want to do their own documentary on Brody. And we're totally embracing of that. We're like, yes, you should do it. And, you know, and if, if we can, you know, whatever we can do to support you, we will, you know, while we're trying to balance making our own film. So obviously, you know, yeah. um, but at the same time, it's like, you know, people are, you know, they were, people are saying, you know, why are you guys making this thing? You guys are, you know, on the outside. And, and my opinion of that is like, we're my objective is to not only make a documentary for the Brony community, but something that translates to the public as well. Because a lot of that stuff that people are making, it's already on YouTube. I mean, there's already a lot of stuff, you know, and, and but the, the challenge with that is it's like it's accessible to people within that within the know. I mean, if you don't understand, you know, the, if you don't understand the archetypes of My Little Pony and you're not in the brony culture, a lot of you just don't know what it is. You don't know what you're watching. It just, just it's a lot of noise and chaos and, you know, and some cool images and some beats and, and you know, they don't get it because you have to invest a lot of time in it. And people like Fox News will roll around and just look to get surface look at it and just smash it because it's super easy to do. I mean, it's stupid. So, you know, we're trying to take it from like, okay, so we know nothing about this project, you know, just like John didn't know anything about this project. Let's take, let's step way back, take a look at it, take another step closer, take a look at it, and then let's jump in and let the, and let these bronies, you know, take us on, on their own journeys to BronyCon. And so we can see it through their eyes, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think there there actually aren't a lot of critics. Um, I've seen a couple things, and I try to stay up on all the discussions. And, and um, actually, I think there's a lot more people that are just super excited to have, you know, uh, a, a professional quality level, uh, you know, work done. Um, and some people that are super excited to see the final product. Definitely. I'm super excited to see the final product. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see it. <laughs> so am I, but I have to wait. Okay. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it'll all it'll all come closer. There's it's less than a month away. Less yeah, than exactly. a month away. Oh yeah. geez, it's yeah. that close. And we're and we're all I believe everybody in here is gonna be there. Yeah, except for awesome. Perry, but except for Perry, yeah, oh, the three of us are going to be there. Poor Perry. Yeah, that Perry? has a very sad face. Oh. <laughs> Why isn't Perry going? I don't have enough money. He's and a drill we- My uh, Navy drill weekend's kind of getting in the way. Oh, hmm. Yeah. Well, you'll be getting ripped while everyone will be getting <laughs> ripped. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, Perry, if you want to go ahead and ask a question, you can. Uh, if I had one rolling around in my head, I would definitely ask it. <laughs> you said something about discussing uh, the military. Uh, I was going to try to lead into that, but I couldn't think of anything logical. I, I love this, though. I mean, talk about you know military and, and and being a brony. I mean, that that to me is so amazing. We've gotten so many letters from people in the military, and it's I, just it is this amazing mind-boggling. number of people. Amazing number of military bronies. It, it's just... Um, one of the things that's going to be happening here in the next couple of days is we're going to send out uh, another casting call. You might have seen the first casting call. Um, we got you know quite a few people writing in for those specific <laughs> kinds of stories that we we're looking for. We we're kind of uh, we found a lot of stories. Now we we have some others that we're looking for, and so um, one of the the things that we're going to focus on are some is uh, a military brony who lives in Arizona. And we're looking for other military bronies who are specifically in Arizona, like Phoenix, Tucson kind of thing. Um, so that's one of the things we're going to be looking for. Um, we're still looking for a parent and like a son in his 20s uh, who have bonded over My Little Pony. Um, we did get you know some parents and some younger kids, and those are kind of cool stories, but we would like an older, uh, older person. Yeah, like- um, also, any more any 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 brony love stories we'd love as well. Again, we did get quite a few, but we're looking for you know the perfect ones. So we're always always happy to get those. Um, we're looking for bronies in Southern California specifically that have interesting stories. We're also looking for an adult brony who has Asperger's or autism or some, or a syndrome or disorder and has been helped by the show. Um, so those. Those people can write us at info, I-N-F-O, at bronydoc, B-R-O-N-Y-D-O-C.com. 
And, you know, it's important to note, these are just some specific additions that we're looking for. It's, mm-hmm. it's not ruling out any other stories. We're still considering everything that's been sent to us. And um, we're just we're looking for a wide uh, range of different kinds of stories to tell in the documentary. So, so that'll help. Yeah, it's I don't know about uh, uh, Brony in Arizona. I, I just know uh, a military guy that lives out in Texas right now. He's he's not stationed there. He's a disabled veteran. Uh, he's oh, wow. an old submariner. How old is he? Oh, crap. His age. I I think he's 20s, like 30s. Mid 20s, yeah. Was, so he was a veteran? Was, does he have, is he suffering from like PTSD? Uh, I'm not certain what exactly his thing is right now. Uh, I'll be right back. So, carry on. You're taking off? Where are you going? Hang uh, on. No, I, I gotta deal with something real quick. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. He's, He's leaving escaping. Us. Thanks, Terry. Don't go away. <laughs> yeah. Well, well yeah. I'll take, the, take a second to also announce something that's happening and starting up here in a day or so. Um, we're gonna be holding an art contest, and this is a contest for, to pick the um, the original piece of art that's going to be the one that we're going to reproduce as the limited edition for uh, the uh, the pledges, the people who have pledged to Kickstarter. Hmm. And uh, so we're giving away a $500 cash prize and a, uh, a seat at the meet and greet with Tara Strong, Lauren Faust, and, and John Delancey. And this, pr- this contest is going to be run on uh, prizes.org. Um, the contest is not up today. I think it's going to actually be up tomorrow. Um, but it's a chance for people to to enter their original My Little Pony uh, artwork, and uh, and we'll pick a winner. Great. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Okay. I um, grabbed my pencil. <laughs> and and of course, um, I've given you I've given you uh, Mike my my story that I've, I've about the. Uh, about being disabled and how uh, shows like MLP have helped. <clears throat> yes, definitely. And, and helped I, going through and absolutely. all the ridicule that you can be given when uh, people look at you for watching a show that isn't meant for your age range, which I've gone through that lots of times <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with um, just back in the day. Cause I was a, not only was I a big fan of uh, Powerpuff Girls, but I was also really mm-hmm. big into it and still am as you can tell by my name, into Star Trek, and specifically into Delancey's character. That's why my name is QCOM, for that mm-hmm. reason. <laughs> I was wondering, okay. Yes. <laughs> so I am a huge Delancey fan. <laughs> nice. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, to, um, to help uh, move this along, though, okay, um... I'm getting law. I'm getting a sea of questions. <laughs> um, here's a question that uh, Muffins has asked: Do you consider the Brony as a cult or a fan base? Hmm. I don't know what the difference is, but yeah. it's certainly a fan base. <laughs> it depends on the Brony, I guess. I mean, I've yeah. seen some Bronies that you know. Where I was reading something where they said uh, Celestia is my Jesus. So I, I I read that today. I'm so apparently I mean <clears throat> Celestia is also a deity. So <laughs> I mean I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean I I'm not I don't to me it doesn't really I mean the I'm I just like it that people are connecting with it and they're very they identify it to the point where they're you know they're very they bring it into their lives in a passionate way and so I I don't know that's a good question it's. I don't know. I'm going to have to go with Mike on that. I, <laughs> I guess we'll have to discover that in the making of the documentary. What is it? And I'm not sure we'll even be able to answer it. I think everyone will come away with a different answer to that question. Yes. What do you guys think? I think it's just, I think an it's just a normal fan base like anything. It's just a bunch of people that like one thing, mm-hmm. have become associated with it. It's just a sense, it's a show that has a sense of belonging, as with mm-hmm. anything that a lot of people like. Look at, um, I mean, like Delancey said, look at Star Trek. Mm-hmm. It's just one, it's, it's, it's a show that's turned into a phenomenon that have brought a lot of people together. 
I mean, what I really also enjoy about it is that it feels like the 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 way that the show has has reached the fan base. It's allowed for the fans to incorporate themselves within the show by like you know taking on the identity of of the characters and creating their own art and creating their own their own fan art and their own videos. And it's like the people within the community are like as celebrated at this point as much as the show is, which is amazing. <laughs> You guys have your own celebrities that you guys have made yourself within the community. <laughs> Which even like, you know, Tara and Lauren are like, yeah, this person's a superstar. And, you know, that person, you got to, you know, they're totally up on it. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of celebrities in our fandom, I've got a question here from MechWolf asking if any bronies like most of the musical artists like Mike the Microphone or Jack Lapp will be in the documentary. We're actually um, going to be taping at BronyCon some of the music portion, but we're trying to figure out um, who we're going to follow and do the kind of the home portion with. And one of the per- people that we're discussing and just seeing if we can, you know, get it together, uh, you know, all the elements together to do this is the Living Tem- Tombstone. So obviously that would involve traveling to Israel and doing a whole a whole story with him. Um, we've definitely reached out to him. Um, he's available and interested in doing that. And now we're just kind of looking from our side and going, um, okay, do we have uh, the money? Obviously, we're, we're, we're getting there. We're doing very well on the Kickstarter, so we can consider those kind of things. Um, and, um, you know, is that the most interesting story that we can tell, or is there somebody else um, that we should follow? And certainly we're looking at it. All those names are very familiar because <laughs> we're looking at everybody. Oh yeah, I'm sure. There's gonna, there's gonna be a good uh, a good grouping of them there as well at BronyCon. I know the hotel we're staying at. We're we're staying with quite a few of them there um, mm-hmm. and stuff. So it'll be. I'm I'm glad you guys will be at the at the panels and stuff because I think there's two different music panels and uh, plenty of opportunities for you guys to to talk with the musicians i'm sure yeah we're gonna have several camera crews so we're gonna you know we still need to figure out exactly which things we're going to be covering but um and we're kind of waiting for the final schedule but uh we're we're definitely going to be all over the convention no doubt about that and uh speaking of that um so that we can have something to uh both have people listening to now uh to say to them as well as maybe uh, something to to write out and give advice to would be what would you recommend people do because I know everybody has uh, when they're making a documentary a different idea of of how people should carry on their business um, when you guys are around should they not approach not approach you guys should they just go about their business what what should people do when they come in contact with you guys at the con well i think what's going to happen we're going to be set up for a couple different things there are going to be some roving camera crews that are just going to capture what's happening naturally so you know uh i would say you know no no jumping in front of the uh the cameras and saying hi mom um (laughs) but uh one of the things that it's kind of exciting that we're going to have is we're going to have a a a camera crew set up in a private room and that's still be determining, you know, we're determining exactly where, but um, there are going to be things that we're going to do there, including some extended interviews with people that we're going to make appointments with, but we're also going to have opportunities, for instance, for, you know, 50 people to line up and come in and say 10 words or less, what being a brony means to you. Um, so we're going to have some fun opportunities for, for a lot of people to participate and, you know, we'll be releasing those plans, uh, just before BronyCon. Great. All right. Sounds exciting. All right. Uh, Demos, you said you, you had something to say? Yeah. Yeah. I got a quick question. Um, how do you guys feel about, you know, where you put the Kickstarter up and then in like three days it was already at your goal? We're blown away. I mean, really. I mean, of course, Lauren was impressed the first, like, $20 that went in. And he goes, oh, my gosh, someone just gave $20. <laughs> and then, like, two minutes later, I was like, yeah, that's 140 now. <laughs> so um, it's just been amazing. And so I, I think, obviously, there's just a strong desire for this in the community. And, and, and it's not even to the community. There are a large percentage of donations just from from people who saw it on Kickstarter, you know, we can kind of track a little bit, 
mm-hmm. where the money's coming from. And, and uh, yeah, there are people who are just Kickstarter fans who go, hey, this looks interesting. Let's do it. So, um, uh, you know, certainly a huge percentage of it came from within the community. And, and uh, many thanks to especially Equestria Daily, a lot of links came in from there. And um, we now, obviously, we feel the, the pressure and the responsibility of delivering something awesome. <laughs> and uh, we're working. We're working towards it. Oh, yeah. yeah. By October. Here's another question. My gosh, Muffins is a one-man question asker tonight. <laughs> um, how many friends have you converted to bronies? That's not really our job. <laughs> I would say we right now are... Uh trying to keep some perspective it's hard not to become a brony yes it's very tempting i think right now though it's our job to kind of keep a little bit of perspective on the community and and not become too engulfed in and that can be that can be after the documentary you don't want to become too uh yeah like you said you don't want to become too involved you don't want to become too uh too one-sided to one thing or another you want to remain objective you want to remain neutral so you can see everything from all sides then mm-hmm. yeah, it's pretty easy to get sucked in though i mean i gotta say i just it's, yeah it's pretty easy just to go i'm a brony i don't care i'm just gonna make it just you know total brony friendly documentary which is i mean you know it, it's no matter what it's gonna lean towards the bronies i mean because we're huge fans and i wouldn't be surprised by the time we're finished editing it if we're all walking around in brony t-shirts <laughs> um let's see my next question then which i might have a uh i might have a couple uh, someone call in on this too uh will you have i know you said that you're going to try to have living living tombstone with you um what about any other bronies outside of the u.s would you be wanting any kind of feedback from them at all we, uh-huh. we have received quite a few uh, emails from people outside the U.S. Obviously, you know, it's pretty expensive. Um, we are looking at the possibility of doing a segment with somebody in Canada right now. Uh, I don't want to kind of reveal too much because obviously we want there to be surprises in the, in the doc. But um, uh, there is also a discussion that's, that's happening between us and um, some conventions that are happening in the U.K. and Germany um, in the next couple months, and, and we're kind of looking at you know what it would cost and what the possibility of actually incorporating those conventions into into the documentary would be, and, and um, uh, that it could be a possibility that we that we do that. I mean, I love that. I mean, I'm looking for any story that will make this thing global, you know, because uh, I've seen that the Bernie community has basically wrapped itself around the world. I mean, it's. It's amazing stories of how people actually get to watch the show that, you know, can't really, you know, they don't have access to it. I mean, they find a way to watch the show. And, you know, that's how strong the passion is, you know, like, I mean, I've been talking to someone in, I don't, I guess I shouldn't reveal too much, but in a, in a kind of in a hostile world to, you know, a really, you know, to being a brony that's, you know, you know, in a third world country. And I was really floored by their story and, and how, how committed they were to the show and how at risk they were for actually being openly openly a brony in this kind of environment. I mean, obviously it's really expensive for international travel. And um, so we're, you know, we're, we're, we are, I actually just the other day put together a, a little budget for that and, and we're trying to, to see, you know, kind of where we end in the Kickstarter and, you know, what the possibilities are. Um, I have a quick follow-up question on that. Relating to inside the U.S., um, do you guys have a sort of a travel route planned? Are you planning on going to that many different places within the U.S. or just a, a few spots? Or um, It'll probably be, I mean, we have a whole bevy of stories on the East Coast, so we're kind of lumping those together into one trip. Um, we have some California stuff. We have some Arizona stuff. And a couple other places, you know, we're trying to do, obviously, the, the most that we can with the budget. And, you know, part of getting all the stories in 
is you know part of a producer's job you really look at okay who are the most interest, interesting stories and do any of these you know come from the same area and we've had a couple of those uh, situations which is which is great because you can take one trip and do you know a couple stories in that area right a lot of it is like you know reading these stories and i mean we've gotten so many we're just like we want these to be inspiring stories from the heart that really you know that are potent that pack a punch so we're going after you know, the most inspirational stories that we can find. I mean, obviously we want to, we, there, I, there, there's so many, it's like we could make a eight part series on this, you know, if we were to incorporate all these stories. So, I mean, er, where people are already going, you know, you could, you could have, you could have a part two and a part three. And we're like, you're right. We could, <laughs> we're like, let's make the first one, you know, but yeah, it, it's that touching that, you know, people within the project are already saying that, you know, when this is done, let's, let's do another one. I'm like, okay, well, wait, let's just do one right now. Yeah. <laughs> let's you know, focus on, let's not get ahead of material. ourselves. But there is that much material we'll start out there. Start with one and then we go yeah. to two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On that, on that, uh, on that interesting topic, uh, not jumping the gun on anything. If everything goes perfectly and there's so much demand, would you guys think about doing another one? Sure, it, it's definitely in the back of our mind. Um, let, you know, let's see how this goes and let's see how it's received. And and we, if it goes as well as we we hope it goes, absolutely. Yeah, why not? Let's just <laughs> twenty years from now we'll be doing this radio show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> we're at part eight now. <laughs> My crazy. Little Pony's been off the air for fifteen years. Yeah, we're still <laughs> making this documentary. <laughs> still taking longest documentary ever. That's a good record to try and break. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, I love it. So whenever you guys are done with it, and you got the DVDs or whatever, are you going to be going to different conventions selling it? No, I think you know one of the things that we've talked about is is. We don't want to be, uh, you know, having to, to have a table and hawk these things. Um, we will probably do a deal with a larger distributor. Um, mm. Because part of the thing is we also want the general public to see this. It's not just for bronies. Yeah. So, um, you know, we haven't put those plans into place on purpose right now. Um, we, we, you know, right now we're, we're worrying about the Kickstarter. The people that contribute to the Kickstarter, they're definitely, you know, first in line to get this thing and uh and then we're going to look at the kind of larger picture um but uh you know we we want to make uh we make tv shows and films for a living we don't want to have to sell dvds for a living <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure you could have plenty of us just go around and start selling it for you <laughs> sure we'll be your salesman <laughs> um where are you guys located? Happen. I'm just curious because I mean I'm sure like we're from all over the country, right? Ohio. Um, um, Shamrock and I are located in Kansas. Yeah. Nice. I, <laughs> I live out of Georgia. Okay. And I'm in Ohio. Nice. Well, Mike and I are. I'm in Venice Beach, and Mike's in uh, in L.A. So we're on the West Coast. Wow, that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good spread, and I love. <laughs> I like this. Yep. Um, and speaking of uh, being spread out, I think I'm going to add. Um, I'm going to add into the call Cider Pony, who is uh, Australian, one of my very few, but very still very awesome out of U.S. bronies that listen to my show. Yeah, cool. Cider's a cool guy. When I yeah, he is a cool guy. So Cider, sorry I woke you up, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. I'd have needed to have gotten up eventually. <laughs> what time is it over there? Uh, it's about 10 a.m. I live a very lazy lifestyle. <laughs> okay, not too bad. Is it true that your toilets really flush like the reverse of the American toilets? <laughs> yep. Is that true? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, like, everything goes backwards. I love Crazy. that. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> it's all because we're um, like living in the future and stuff. I'm not entirely sure how the time travel stuff works, but it makes the toilets flush backwards. <laughs> wow. Sounds like a whole other documentary. <laughs> Australia, what is this place? <laughs> um, so, do you have any questions, Cider? Um, 
A couple. I wasn't here for a lot of the interviews, so I'm not entirely sure how many of them are going to be repeats, but... Don't worry just about for... it. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll ask a few. Repeat, do you guys have... go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Do you guys have much, like, academic training in this stuff? Like, have you done heaps of ethnographic studies before, or is this sort of a first one for you guys? You want me to take this mic, or...? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, by training, you mean, like... Uh, I don't know, you said ethnographic, so you mean like cultural uh, anthropology or something? Yeah, yeah. Like, um, um, well, I mean, I studied cultural anthropology in college, so, and that actually, funny enough, that was, you know, my favorite subjects were, were theater, film, and cultural anthropology, and I actually at one point said, you know, I wouldn't mind being a cultural anthropology major, and at the school that I went to, which was USC in LA, they have a great culture anthropology program that ha that's also coupled with the film school and i've always found that fascinating the you know people in their environments and stuff and trying to you know obviously that's you know that's the big challenge is you know is to make something and not be ethnocentric and uh and to see things you know through their eyes without without tainting it so no it's a very good that's a very good question okay Cool. Does that does that answer your? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That one does. Um. Can't think of anything else off the top of my head immediately. Um. Well, let's talk about the weather, man. How's the weather out there? <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, there's sunshine and not much rain. Like it is ninety percent of the time over here. All right, it's like L.A., man. <laughs> I was gonna crack a terrible joke related to our song. Let's hear the joke. That would be a good joke. What? Let's hear the like Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, can you hear Can you hear the thunder? <laughs> <laughs> well. Can you hear the is, is Men at Work still on tour? <laughs> no, one of the guys behind that died. Oh, he did? Well. Yeah. The, the one oh, food for it. Oh, that's so sad because they were like making these guest appearances on, the, on an American TV show called Scrubs. They yes. were just at one point. They just suddenly showed up, and he was like sitting there playing guitar. It was amazing. It was like, oh wow. Oh really? Those yeah. are always the best clips from Scrubs. <laughs> I know, right? I love that. I was like, what? What's so random? But it was so awesome. <laughs> it always worked. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, Cider, I, I do. I do have some questions for you, just because you're outside of the U.S. and everything. Yep. Um. Do what kind? I don't know if you know this, but, like, for, like, merchandise for MLP down there, is it any yep. different from up here? Do you guys get in later than we do? Do you guys get more stuff? Because I know a lot of uh, a lot of merchandise in Europe, they seem to have a lot more specialized areas. Like, with Germany, they've got, like, the comic books and, and uh, more flat-out stuff, which only stuff we have here is, besides the show, is just the figures and the the iPad apps. I mean, do you have anything else that we don't? <laughs> uh, Australia sort of is a secondary market to a lot of places, purely because it costs so much to get things down here if they can't get it locally produced. So uh, a lot of uh, our culture is six, seven, twelve months behind America and Europe and everywhere else. Uh, in terms of merchandise, I went out and actually checked it yesterday to see what they had and um it's a much more limited selection than what's available in america we've only just started getting the mcdonald's my little pony toys oh wow, wow. So, um, how, how, how strong is the brony community out there uh like a lot of communities it does exist it's just a lot more i'm not gonna say hidden because it's more that there's just not enough people behind it. So if you do go looking for it, you will find the communities around there. There's two definite brony communities that I'm aware of for the state I live in. And I think there's a few more that are slightly hidden. But um, And what state do you live in? Uh, New South Wales. Okay. And is that more... Is, where Sydney is. Do you feel like people are more accepting or less accepting the United States? I mean, sort of the haters and all that. Um... I can't really comment because I have an incredibly unique position where I can just write it off and go, oh, it's all part of my academic lifestyle. Why is that? 
uh, I sort of study um, internet cultures and um, video games as my major at university, well, for PhD stuff at university. Mm -hmm. So if anyone asks, I can just say, yep, it's for university stuff. Oh, so you sort of hide behind that. Well, it's not even that I hide behind it. It's it sort of is kind of true where it's like I am interested in it from an academic perspective of mm -hmm, how mm -hmm. this entire thing's going around. Um, even at home, I've got massive support there, which is entirely unexpected, where I told my parents that I watch My Little Pony, and then a week later, my mum comes in and goes, hey, saw these at sale at McDonald's and just handed me all of My Little Pony toys from there. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, would you consider yourself a brony, or are you more kind of curious, curious about it from an academic's point of view? Uh, I definitely consider myself a brony. I do watch the show for the enjoyment perspective. Uh, I do enjoy the music and everything else. Um, I definitely consume the fan culture. So, like, do you, I are you writing? Is this in going like in your your dissertation or? No, no. no okay. This is. So this is. A, I a may side write my passion. own. Yeah. I may so write is, a paper on it eventually, but at the moment, there's no plans to. So what is your sort of your academic interpretation of the culture, you know, the fandom? Um, I still don't entirely understand why it's so massive. I love it. I love it. <laughs> like, that, was, that was the answer I, I was hoping it, you'd say. <laughs> there's just no reason for it to be as massive as it is. Like, mm. There's no <laughs> press for it or anything. It's just completely no out of reason. control. I love it. That's that's the exploration of the documentary. I love that. Yeah. That's what's feeling. <laughs> that's that's what I love. That's it. Nobody can can real. I mean, people have their theories, but it's the same thing. This just makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. What and what fun is there in making sense? <laughs> yeah. No. None. It would, it would, if it was like if you could explain it, I mean, it'd be like, why are we making a film about it? <laughs> where's the mystery in it you know where's yeah. the I, lo I love making films where it's just at the end of it it's like people walk away and they all everyone has their own theory it's like it could be this it could be that you know but it really it's like what relates to you to the audience what do you take away from it you know yeah and that that to me is that's art you know yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, about yeah. a year ago, I was real worried that this thing has grown so fast that it's just gonna kind of collapse in on itself for growing so fast, but no, it just keeps growing. <laughs> yeah. It's I, become, I, you know, it's kind it's of become a self-sustaining culture. <laughs> That's the big thing about it. Like, there's more culture being produced every day than people are getting used to, so there's always new stuff out there. Yeah. Hey, yeah. what do you guys... Question for you. How many bronies do you think there are in the world? Oh. This Ten. Is a good one. Uh, <laughs> it's hard. I almost have to... Um, you would know, mm. Sham. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had. You have to. Uh, I, I'm trying to go off of numbers from uh, from furry statistics, and now I'm trying to think of outside of that because it's it it definitely breaches more into the mainstream, um, but it hasn't been around as long. Um, but uh, definitely a lot faster. It's garnered a lot. It's garnered a massive audience very quickly, mm -hmm. um, and judging by if you go based off of uh, BronyCon, which has how many people are, are going to? Yeah, I think we're going to have two thousand people there. I think it's more than that. Mm -hmm. I think it's I think it's almost three thousand at the on the meetup website. Is it now? I know, Mike. Uh, I haven't checked in a little while, but uh, I know that they plan. On, they think that it's probably going to hit the. The max, which is like four thousand. Okay. Yeah. So if you judge by that, that's that's largest. That's the largest Anthrocon that we have as well. Um, yeah. Forty four hundred was Anthrocon. Yeah. So um, it's already gotten to that level that quick. Um, so I don't know. It's it's tough to judge. It's kind of one of those statistical things. Like if you have a hundred people, that's enough to like get a statistical spreadsheet for an entire demographic of people, you know? So, um, I'd say it's at least in the, um, God, maybe, maybe close to a hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. Somewhere, somewhere in that range, larger even. I mean, you, 
it's it's hard to judge on the internet because you can go anywhere and see a whole nother group of people you've never seen before, you know. And it's just like walking. It, it's not like walking out on the street where you may eventually you start to know everybody, you know. Mm. But um, there's just so many new and new and new people that sometimes you go to the same place twice and you won't see the same people. Um, and so I think that's one of the big things with not only the retention, because the retention of of who we have in the fandom so far has been pretty good, um, considering all of the huge... There's been lots of drama things, of course, as every fandom has, but um, people have stayed for the most part, um, and yet more and more and more come in. So, so you keep all the people that come, and you get even more it's multiplying so Mm -hmm. that number is getting pretty big definitely i like neon fix its comment let's revolt and start a country that's a documentary (laughs) (laughs) oh god (laughs) we don't need need bronie Bronie land subversive huh (laughs) (laughs) you know the military bronies would probably get behind that one (laughs) we have our military yeah got quite a few from Quite a few in the UK as well. There's there's military bronies everywhere. Mm. Yeah, they're just everywhere. I mean, I know there's over 200 right here in Ohio. Uh, I know of like 150 of them uh, because we got our own forums, and there's just they just keep pouring in. <laughs> what part of Ohio are you in? <laughs> I'm in Cincinnati, um, right on the edge of Kentucky. Huh? Oh, what's that? WKRP, that TV show. WK, yeah. That's dated. They don't know. They don't He's know a 21-year-old, Lawrence. They don't know. <laughs> Uh-oh. Somebody's got the cops. I oh, know. yeah, that's, that's over here. <laughs> it's always cop cars in L.A. Yeah, Man. that's L.A. That's, like, <laughs> hey, that's, that's me and trains over here. <laughs> oh, nice. No, that's you and tornadoes. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> every uh, day, you know, it's whatever. Tornadoes. What, kind of, what are the bronies like in Cincinnati, Ohio? Are they are they different in any way, or what's your observation? Uh, uh, there's really only like two or three of us in Cincinnati. Everybody is from either Dayton, Columbus, or Cleveland, and so we always have these meets in Cleveland. And I'm like, that's as far as I can drive and still be in Ohio. You know, and so, but wow. I, I go to the Dayton meets, and there's just this house that's uh, nothing but bronies live there, and we call it the Pony House, and there's pony posters everywhere, and we pack it full. So, I see a question in the chat room here. Do you intend to put some views of the other side in the documentary? A um, number of people have asked that, so I think we should just address it, which is, I think we're not necessarily going to go seek out those views, but I think they will come naturally because if we do a profile on somebody and their parents aren't supportive, that kind of thing, you know, we're going to interview the parents. We're going to find out why. So uh, I think um, the, the, the other side will just kind of naturally be there. Yeah. I, I wonder, because um, I haven't been to BronyCon before, but uh, I wonder how many people might be there that are against, that may tr- be trying to pick it or uh, get involved in some way of that. Because there's been other conventions that have had those issues before. There's pickets? Yeah. You're kidding. <laughs> Answer comes? Really? Uh, yeah. What? I, d- I, don't, I don't know how, I don't know if it'll be at the Brony ones, because again, it's, it's still fairly new, and I don't know if that sort of mentality has developed enough yet. Um for that to happen, but surely, uh, if you go to 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 uh, many other conventions, there are some that will have people there. Um, wow! Yeah, cause, wow! Yeah. Who are the organizations that are picketing? Is this like people from Fox News? Uh, actually, uh, wasn't um, Demos? You may have yeah. to help me out with this one. At at Anthrocon a few years ago, was it Anonymous that was there? It was E Bombs the- World. E bombs world was there. Yeah, and they and of were. Course they're you know they're they're a, uh, um, a sort of a parody newbie, website. Uh, um, uh, sort of extravagant um, or sensational, uh, sensationalistic sort of a sort of a media website. So that's sort of expected. But um, why were they picketing? Did they say 
We're just saying, like, hey, these are fur fags and everything, and hating, and it's funny. Oh, they so were, just, yeah. It's just pure hate stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was yeah, it, yeah. You know, it's. Uh... So they didn't have any valid reason for. No. 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 See, that's, they, I mean, I mean, if we're we're gonna listen to somebody, it's they're gonna have to have an intelligent, you know, reasoning behind it. Just okay. pure hate. It's just like, what what is that? That's just <laughs> completely. I mean, you can use those same slurs against anybody or anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's Actually, just this, stupid. <laughs> this brings up this brings up a really good point. Um, I don't know if you guys are are you familiar with uh, Teens React? Oh, yeah, God. we saw. Yeah, we saw that. Actually, show. we were just discussing that the other day amongst all of us. So have bad. you seen? Have you seen the newest one that they did? Just, I think it was May 30th that came out. Um, where they, I don't even remember what they were reacting it to. It was 28th, and I told you about it. Yeah, the 28th. <laughs> Jamos told me about it. And uh, they had the kid that was on the, the uh, Teens trolls. React to, to MLP. And the one who said, uh, or he had, his, you know, he had his hat on, back, his ball cap on backwards. And he's like, oh, they're a bunch of trolls. You know, they're all these... <laughs> You know, these people, nobody actually likes the show. They're all just doing that to troll people. And he was wearing a brony shirt on this other Teens React yeah. later. <laughs> it was React to prom. <laughs> yeah. I love yeah, it. It, it, it was full circle. I was watching was. some video on YouTube about this guy that was completely just, he had cl- cut together a, a bunch of clips from the show, and he was basically a revol- he kind of like just narrating over the top of it and bashing it. And then the thing went on for like twenty minutes, but but like minute nine or ten, he's like, "Oh, that's kind of cute. All oh, right, I got to give him that." Oh, okay. I mean, it was like in the clip itself, he was becoming a brony, but he set off to bash it, and it was like it was the most amazing thing. He just didn't get very far. <laughs> I mean, but you can see the guy was like honestly came at it from a from a, a point of view. Wow, I have a helicopter outside my window. <laughs> the thumb's going down. We Somebody's have down. you surrounded. I, Come out with your drugs in the air. It's like, are they on my roof? <laughs> <laughs> wow, hang on okay. a second. got to find out what's going on. There's a drug bus nest. Do not next attempt door. to run or we will shoot. Stashed it in your wall. The whole house was just packed tight. They opened the front door and just bags fell off. They're coming after the ponies. Okay, I don't, know, I don't know what that was. That's weird. I thought it was landing on my roof. <laughs> it sounded like it. Ugh, that was scary. I forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> oh, the guy wearing the pony shirt? Something, something um, pony. Being abducted, alien abductions. <laughs> Oh, that's almost as bad as... Oh, uh, we have uh, one of our other DJs here, Pony Toast. Um, he was doing a... We were all doing a Google Hangout, just, just hanging out. He he makes music himself, and he does a show that he does every now and again. Usually just commentary when new episodes come out. And he lives in Boston. Okay. And uh, you'll, you'll see him at BronyCon as well. Cool. And, um... We were just sitting around hanging out, and all of a sudden we hear gunshots from outside his window. There was a massive shootout going on. Oh my Ooh. god! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was it was pretty pretty hairy for a little bit. I mean, and these weren't these weren't like and these weren't like little guns too. They were actual like big like shotguns. And oh my god! Was, yeah, it was it was. Uh, Pretty where scary po- for a while. Where does Pony Toast live? Like in Southie or something? All I know is that he lives somewhere near lives uh, Boston, I think. Southeast yeah, he Boston, lives in Maryland. Yeah, yeah, oh, Maryland. Yeah. Oh, Maryland, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it can get kind of hairy out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely parts of LA that are that are like that too. I used to actually live in Highland Park and I uh, I came close to getting shot. And then I said, "All right, I think I'm done with this neighborhood." <laughs> as cool as it was. It's a total hipster neighborhood. I mean, a lot of artists and stuff have moved there, but I mean, it has like this gang culture that's just you can feel it. It's about to explode at any moment. Yeah. Hipsters have but, gang culture now? What? What's that? <laughs> yeah, the bro- brony gangbangers. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I uh I'm kind of I'm kind of glad the nicer areas of of LA I've I've been to were, were all uh, Santa Monica side 
Yeah, and, that's, uh, cause yeah. that's that's great. Because <laughs> my my brother in law is a director and a producer. He does acting and the whole spectrum of stuff. And and uh, he's was based out there for a, for the longest time, and uh, used to used to fly out there. But man, it's uh, it's quite an experience to be in L.A. or Santa Monica or any of those it places. <laughs> yeah, I live near Santa Monica. I live like probably three miles away. Santa Monica is beautiful. It's great. What kind of projects did your brother-in-law do? Um, well, he uh, he's he's Italian, and uh, he does a lot of. Uh, he actually played semi-pro uh, soccer for Italy for what? Well, football, I guess. Um, and so he runs a, a kids program called Soccer Academy. I think mm-hmm. it was a TV series. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's done some other documentary stuff. Uh, one was called uh something ice it had to do with his relationship with his father or something because he does hockey as well mm-hmm. uh, so anything involving hockey or soccer he does a lot of but they do a lot of um advertising campaigns for different you know like adidas and um soccer soccer paraphernalia sort of stuff um but uh that's that's the main thing and he did a psa with um uh devito uh, over, oh, Danny um, DeVito. Oh, yeah, cool. Um, about, uh, and I can't think of what it was about. Um, hell, I'll have to, I'll have to find it on YouTube. Uh, but, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. It's neat stuff he's been able to do. So I always like to hear him, his stories about how he got to meet, uh, uh, different people, different shows, even the sci fi stuff, because he doesn't really do that stuff. You know, he's not into the, as much of that culture. But, um, you know, people from Battlestar Galactica and all this stuff that I'm totally into. I love that stuff. I'm like, man, I wish I could meet those people, you know? <laughs> Sounds like he's living the dream, though. He comes over here from Italy, and he's just superstar, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's he's quite a jack-of-all-trades. He does quite a lot of stuff, but he's he's pulled it back now. He does mostly just, you know, just international business. But um, he uh, he tries to stay close to close to home now. Uh, here in Kansas, so okay, but, uh, cool. Yeah, quite quite reduced. <laughs> uh, real quick, uh, the guy with the T-shirt from Teens React, I uh, put the link there in the Skype chat. Oh, cool. Okay, so, I thought uh, <laughs> shows a before and after. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, <clears throat> Perry, if you want to go ahead and ask, you can. All right. Uh, I had a question. Um, how has being a Brony or simply just watching the show, how has it maybe affected you? Like, how, how has it affected your uh, decision-making? Uh, I think as filmmakers, it's not fair of us to, to kind of make those, make comment on that, quite frankly. Um, we are, we're trying to remain objective for now. Um, you know, if, if we become Bronies after, we maybe become Bronies after, but, um, Right now, it's our job to, to kind of look at this with, uh, with a little bit of an objective eye. Uh, Cider, do you have anything else? Do you have anything to say? Um, I've got a couple that are unique to my situation. Um, it's, it's sort of been like in a semi-secret cult, like stonemasons or something, for where I am. Because in conversations and stuff, I don't even realize I'm dropping uh, things from My Little Pony, but I was at liquor store once and just went up to the guy and said, hey, can you pass me that bottle of Apple Jack Daniels? And the guy just stood there <laughs> for about 10 seconds. <laughs> He's just like, you watch My Little Pony, don't you? Oh, oh that's classic. Um, oh. Maybe. Sweet, I'll give you 50% discount. <laughs> yes, I watch My Little Pony. <laughs> I do have to admit, as I go through crowds, I just look around and I go, I wonder who is a brony here? And I keep going, I wish I had a shirt so that people, you would see if people <laughs> react to me. <laughs> yeah, that's actually... true. Every time we're in public, Mike's always looking around. I know that guy's a brony. I know it. I know it. <laughs> we, uh, every, every once in a while, uh, QCOM and I, we get with some of our friends in Kansas. We go to, to Lawrence, which is where Kansas University is. Um, and, uh, we'll walk around and, uh, if you go to a Walmart or something, we've run into people before and we've had, like, I've had a brony shirt on and they would walk up to us and be like, Hey, we're bronies, you know, <laughs> it's just, 
these random encounters, you know, in real life. <laughs> so it's, it's very interesting. That's amazing. Well, I can say in the making of this, my girlfriend has become a brony. That's good. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't want to be called a Pega sister. She's she's no. she wants to be called a brony. <laughs> yeah, that 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 name has sort of been um it some people take it or leave it just cuz some people say brony is neutral, some people say it's Pega sister, some people say wasn't there a third term? Pegasus just yeah. takes to, uh, so long to say. That's the yeah. problem. With Pegasus it. Yeah, sounds yeah, like a horse a long, name. It's, it's too many syllables. She says brownie just sounds cooler. Yeah. 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 It does. It really does. It's like brownie. Or how those brownies. <laughs> <laughs> you Pega actually, sister sounds like a horse nose. I remember I swear. if you would if you would get on Google and if you were to search for Google, I don't know if it's still this way, but it was a while back. If you were to get on get on Google and search for the word brony, it would it would ask you again and say, "Did you mean brownie?" <laughs> 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 you were asking for the wrong word. <laughs> that actually well. reminds me of another story that uh, we have a. Um, we have another uh, DJ that. No, it's not. No, I just search brony. Comes up with the urban de- definition. Yeah. So, no. So it's, that's, it's yeah. Oh, and then it goes to brownies. But no, yeah. you get the first top four are brony. So we're making progress. We are. <laughs> Yay! We got four. Um, <laughs> speaking of uh, other encounters, I know that um, uh, we have another DJ on here every once in a while. A prison. He had um. He uh, he had some friends over, and they were all watching the show, and they all decided, "Hey, let's go get let's 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 get some pizza delivered." So um, they go, they get the pizza delivered. Door knocks, this pizza guy, and one of his friends just says something completely off the wall, random, and he says, "Yeah, we're we're watching, you know, we're watching My Little Pony." He goes, and the pizza guy goes, "Oh, really, bro hoof?" <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Out of random. <laughs> That's become Mike's uh, nickname now. You know, last time Brock off, they're calling him Mike Brohoof. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's great. I love hearing that stuff. That just makes me... stuff Can makes I call me you Brohoof now, Mike? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Mike. Yeah, that's fine. Mike Brohoof. Mike Brohoof. Pony Sona acquired. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh. So, have you all contributed to the documentary? Have you gone on Kickstarter? Well, whoa, it got quiet. And before <laughs> silence. <laughs> I, 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 I unfortunately missed that boat. You have it's, six it's, days left. Yeah, oh, wait. It's, oh, it's, nobody's missed the boat. Shouldn't have spoken. Well, let me uh, just trundle on over there. Yeah, oh, me. I've, I've just, already committed $30. Nice. Nice. So we're gonna get yourself uh, up. You, I'm gonna go thirty one. Oh. oh I actually had I actually had a question on these. I was reading down through some of your um your your contribution levels. Sure. And uh on here it mentions up to a certain point, uh if I can find it again, I don't remember how much it was. Oh yes, here we go. Uh like for seventy five dollars or more. Um you you say in your description Blu-ray DVD. Is it both? Is it, it only a Blu-ray? No, is that, that was a mistake, and I got a little education about that. Uh, it is a Blu-ray disc, not a regular DVD. We are okay. going with new technology. Um, okay, so no Blu-rays at all. I know. No, I've, no gotten, I've gotten quite a quite a bit of uh, lashing for for only going Blu-ray, but uh, it really is where we are now. It's it's Blu-ray, and you know. Quite frankly, you can go to Best Buy and get a refurb Blu ray. I know everybody doesn't have the money, but it's forty nine dollars. It's it's not exactly out of reach. It's sham. That's the reason I'm getting just the digital download version, so that way I can bring. So there is a digital download stuff. version. Yes, that's yes, question. that's that's what the thirty dollar one is. Correct. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I was like, I was like, man, I would really love to have a signed thing, but you know, I. You know, I'm a I'm a poor college student. I just use my Xbox for my DVD player, <laughs> play all my movies on. So okay. Yeah, I that's a Blu-ray. Or you can still get a signed thing and just have that Blu-ray for in the future when because at the that's you know true. at the larger levels you'll also get the digital download. So, See, yeah. that was another thing I was going to ask. So that's that's a good thing to clarify. Yeah, it's always yeah. all the above plus. So. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Good. Awesome. 
Plus, uh, look where it's well on the Kickstarter page. One thousand five hundred eighty-nine backers. You can be number one thousand five hundred ninety <laughs> for one dollar. <laughs> you can turn that number. <laughs> what a deal! Well, if you had it's already $10. at one five nine one now. Keep oh. up. Uh, two more since I refreshed. Like just now. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think we're offering some really cool stuff uh, here. You know, definitely when you get into the, you know, 100 bucks, you get a Blu-ray, you get two Blu-rays, you get a digital download, you get a T-shirt. I mean, that's pretty darn good. And then, you know, 150 you get all that plus the art print. Get up to the 250 which obviously, which has been pretty popular. You get your Blu-ray and your art print signed by Kara Strong, Laura Faust, and John Delancey. I mean, that's that's pretty good. All in all, in one shot there. Yeah. And we we have all the way going up to ten thousand. We have four backers who put in ten thousand. And yeah, that's pretty. Quick question: Did though, that surprise all those, to get all the people in the same room? I mean, that's amazing. I mean, those people are not often in the same room. Literally, so, you know, it's kind right? of it's it's that's historic. <laughs> I think because when they record the show, they're not together. I mean, they just they go into a VO booth, and you know, I don't think John had never met Tara before. You know, he'd done the show, and he'd met Tara in Canada. So it was like these people knew about each other, but had never actually been in the same room. It's it was just amazing to see it all come together. Uh, I think I actually might have taken the uh, one fifty ninety spot. <laughs> I just threw 31, and, and uh, I, I went back and checked. So I was like, it's one, 159 or 1589 before I put it in. So Nice. <laughs> May have Thank taken you. that spot. Thank you. Cool. cool. The, the, the response has been amazing. It's just really. I think even within the community, I see the comments are already going, I didn't think it could get that high, and it really has. I think right now we are something like the eighth, most funded film ever on Kickstarter. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. geez. I didn't know that. Yeah. In, we, not in the history of it. Just like in the that history. Month. In the history. Really? In the history. Yeah. Oh. Let's That's make it number man. one. Yeah, Come we on. need yeah, to get to a question. Let's go, get bronies. The, what are you waiting for? Yeah, if you tell, go play the cameras. Come on, guys. If you tell You're a question to daily, they'll make Matt it happen. Matt film who's trying to get distribution. I think, I. I don't know. I don't know if he's going to make it. You know what? I have a question. Can you? Um, I know I already sub- I already pledged thirty dollars, but is there a way I can change it to pledge seventy five? Actually, they have a really nice upgrade feature. So if you log back into Kickstarter, mm-hmm. um, actually, a lot of people have upgraded, especially when we added the extra you know bonus discs and that kind of thing. And yeah, yes, definitely. If you do it before the tenth yeah. of June, you can you can upgrade. After the 10th of June, what's going to happen is the Kickstarter will be closed to new. It's just the way they work. They'll be closed to new people and upgrades. But we did set up a PayPal account. I I, I actually set it up after um, a number of people from a lot of foreign countries were saying, you know, we can't somehow use our credit card or we can't uh, use uh, Amazon Payments, which, uh, you know, is the payment facilitator for Kickstarter. Um, so what's going to happen is after the Kickstarter is closed, the PayPal will remain open for a couple months for people who want to upgrade and, and do new pledges and that type of thing. Um, and, uh, yeah, the response on, on PayPal was a little, has been overwhelming. Also, I put an update this morning. I think our total is uh, a little over 13,000 collected on PayPal. Wow. Amazing. That's quite a bit. Yeah, actually, it, it was a lot. They actually uh, put a freeze on us taking any funds out for like 21 days because they want to make sure it's not a scam. <laughs> oh, yeah, obviously. <laughs> okay, there we go. I just changed uh, changed mine from 30 to 75. Cool, thank you. I don't have you. a Blu-ray player yet. <laughs> now I'll get one. Okay. Like, okay. Okay. Uh, cheaper by the month. You can do it. 49 bucks for a Blu-ray player. Change your life. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll, just, I'll probably end up getting a Blu-ray drive. Oh, there you I've go. Got mine. Oh. I've got my computer hooked up to my TV. That's how I stream everything. So is this how it's going to be? Thank you. Come on. Am I have to go and re up my, my own thing just to one up you again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to go now, dude. I totally one up to you. It's a pony. There are $10,000 spots still open. 
<laughs> Alex, this will keep going. Or that easy. <laughs> you, should have, you should have put it on eBay. This would keep going for a while, you see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll do some dollar bidding. <laughs> Nickel and dime up to the top there. Well, there is actually a little uh, little bonus for uh, some people. Um, if you really can't afford some of the... Um, some of the bigger contributions uh, that allow you to get into the meet and greets and get the voicemail and that kind of thing. Um, some of that stuff is actually being um, auctioned off. Um, and I'll get that, that link for you in just a second here. Let me find it. I was there last night. They were, they were doing a podcast for uh, the Gray Mayor, and I was listening to yeah. the and that's what they were auctioning. They were auctioning one of the big ticket numbers. They were doing the, the meet and greet with you guys and Delancey and Tara. Oh, really? What did they get for it? I think they got $700. See, what, oh. a, bon- what, a, what a bargain. Yeah. Oh, wow. And there are going to be a couple more of those coming up because there are people who aren't going to BronyCon that are auctioning theirs off, their seats mm-hmm. off, so, which is fine with us. And, and it helps charity, and, and we're, we're happy to, to have them do that. So if you, if you can't afford the, the big bucks, uh, you might be able to, uh, to get in that way. Hey, hey, do you go. What did you do? What? 76. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> so, uh, I, I actually do have another question that I was thinking about trying to think of some more uh, documentary specific stuff. Um, I know uh, you guys have a um, uh, a sort of more, more free based statement on the actual Kickstarter in regards to the funds, um, but uh, is there any anticipation of what sort of gear you're looking at? Um, uh, you don't have to be, you can be as specific or as non-specific as you want, I guess. Um, but you know, are, are you looking at some, uh, full on jibs or, or, uh, you know, some, some different, uh, 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 cranes and things or how, how, how full on are you going with this now that you've, well, I mean that that kind of stuff like cranes and jibs. I mean that's like more for a scripted film than a than a documentary. I right. mean, well, I mean, I mean there are there are like reality shows like Survivor and these big shows that want to bring those things in. But I mean, our our aim is really about following personal stories that converge at BronyCon. So, I mean, big jibs and stuff. It's it's kind of hard to chase them and with a jib. Yeah, <laughs> so I mean, it's, it, because it becomes kind of you know at that point it's like we're, you're rehearsing in order to use a jib and stuff at least on a, you know outside of an establishing shot of a location it's you got to rehearse the action with somebody I mean and then it, then it's not a documentary anymore <laughs> it's right. you know so what what we're looking feature. at where where a lot of the money will go is towards you know traveling our crews to shoot individual stories that are going to go into the documentary. Then, you know, obviously the big um, BronyCon weekend uh, is going to be pretty expensive because we've got uh, at least three and we may have four crews running at the same time. And um, Kickstarter and then, takes a big, takes 10% of it. Well, yeah, oh, 5% wow. to Kickstarter, 5% to Amazon payments, uh, or 3 oh. to 5%. So that's just kind of the cost of doing business. And, and um, so what our idea as opposed to getting really over the top fancy is to get as much content, good content as possible. Um, and so, uh, and then, you know, as far as equipment, what we are exploring, we've been doing some tests and, and we will probably end up going with um, DSLR shooting. It's kind of the way to go right now that uh, it's, a, or it's a really nice, kind of nice high-end look. Um, Cider, go ahead and say what you put in chat there. Uh, not sure if I should, because if my university does find out, I could get in trouble for it. Okay, never mind. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even... Chat chat, or our chat? The Skype chat. Yeah, our chat. chat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm being um, a troll. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, another, <laughs> I guess a, a follow-up, a follow-up on that would be, um, what, what size, uh, what size crews are you looking at? Obviously, um, if you're doing multiple crews, that's that's an even bigger deal. You've now trying to out at the same time. Yeah, um, I mean, the BronyCon <laughs> itself is going to be pretty big because it will have you know if we have four crews, it'll be you know a shooter, uh, uh, a 
audio person, a producer, a PA, a camera assistant with each crew. So that's, you know, five people times four crews. That's already 20 people uh, plus myself. You know, that, that that's a lot of people. <laughs> plus, right. we have, plus we have a little green screen room as well. So, Are you planning on... Are you planning on um, just traveling with the with like a select uh, four or five when you go across co- cross country, cross Correct. you know trans international stuff like that? Yeah, usually what you do to save money is you you travel you know your producer, your your director, uh, shooter, and then pick up you know sometimes a local shooter or a local audio person, uh, local uh, production assistant, that kind of thing to help you out. <laughs> um, let's see. Brony Doc in the chat is you, Laurent. That's me. Oh, that's you, Mike. Okay, okay. Except um, that I don't know how to chat back, but I'm there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's too hard um, to pay attention to two things at once. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. I, I believe uh, Dave. Uh, I don't know how to say your name. Dimos, Dimos. has a question, Dimos. and then I have one Dimos. as well. Go on. Yep, just a quick question. Um, at BronyCon, um, what are your limits as where you're going? I mean, because I know a lot of people, whenever they're doing documentaries, they're like, well, I'm just going to stick to the lobby, the you know, the panels, and the dealer's den. That's it. I'm not going anywhere else. Um, are you going to be just kind of roaming around everywhere uh, or just Room sticking? parties. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm interested in those room parties. But um, yes. the uh, – we don't have any limits. Um, luckily, you know, BronyCon is participating with us on this documentary and collaborating. Um, Andrew, who's running BronyCon, is one of our consulting producers. Um, but we will, that said, we will go in with a game plan. Um, part of what we're doing, in, and we kind of had this discussion earlier, is, you know, we don't really have the money and the luxury to just go and shoot and see what we get. We were going to go in with specific things in mind. Mm-hmm. Um, so, although we'll be everywhere, we we do have some very specific ideas of what we want to capture. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I've I've got uh, some some of my Brony friends who are in other kinds of uh, jobs. Uh, specifically, one guy is asking me if uh, you guys have already picked out a studio for motion graphics and or uh, editorial stuff. Um, we have some ideas, and I don't think we want to quite reveal those yet. We have some pretty darn exciting things in the works. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, let's see. A question from Paper Derp about the Blu-ray stuff. So, I mean, besides the special features, and I know that there's going to be a second disc that has extended interviews, uh, can you reveal anything... Any kind of other special things and yeah, any special features? Um, we are still, again, still planning those. Sorry, not going to quite release them. Yeah, at least release our plans yet. But we, again, uh, uh, Lauren came up some with some some great ideas, and and we're working on those. Um, it's nice to uh, to be associated with uh, people like Tara and Lauren Faust uh, and John Delancey because we have some some access that that is great. Okay. So who's who's going to have the best room party? Me, definitely. Probably Sham. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> this guy, because I am Irish and I know how to throw an amazing yes. party. Oh no! Yeah. Oh, I love it. I'm had, rooming with him. Oh jeez. I had uh, just as a, as a demonstration uh, when I became uh, when I became a brony and started to get involved with Celestial Radio and all this stuff. I decided that talking to QCOM and some other people that I wanted to have a meetup. At, in my in my town, which is a small like eight thousand people in my town, and I was like, I want to have a meetup from everybody in like you know in Kansas, you know, come to my house and we'll just party <laughs> at my house for Labor Day weekend for like four days. Wow! <laughs> and uh, we ended up having twenty people come and all stay at my house, and uh, everywhere from Colorado uh, to Georgia to Minnesota, uh, <laughs> all came. To my house in Southeast Kansas. <laughs> and, I paid. Uh, I paid a four hundred dollar fucking round trip plane ticket to go out there. <laughs> yeah. It was magical. And, uh, 
And uh, we um, we did all kinds of stuff. I DJ. We had some live DJing stuff we did. Um, among some other things, we we played the the My Little Pony drinking game, um, which is a <laughs> it is a uh, quite a fun one. It's it's terrifying because it's very difficult. Um, but uh, I also do sort of this live thing. I don't know if you guys have added you on Skype, but um, if you see my my beard there in that picture, you'll notice there are some uh, some barbecue skewers in there. <laughs> so and, that uh, is. A- yeah, yeah, those those are barbecue skewers. It looks and, like uh, you're eating like hay or something. <laughs> Hold on. I've got a picture for this somewhere. I gotta go and dig it up. Yeah, go find it. Um, okay. But uh, you know, we were just sitting there, and I was you know DJing, and and someone brought up the leftover skewers. We had a pack of a hundred, and you know, some people ate like seventeen or something out of them. And uh, I looked over at him, and and someone suggested, "Hey, you should put these in your beer." And I was like, "Why not?" <laughs> and uh, so we were live streaming the whole thing, you know, on video. And I just started putting them in there, and I managed to get all eighty-three of them in there. Oh my god! And, uh, <laughs> at a at that a later, reminds- a, that's got to be a new Guinness World of a Guinness record, right? right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and later on, I went back to Walmart, and I was like, I have to see if I can do a hu- the whole pack of a hundred. And I oh bought a pack of a hundred, and I did it. And now I just carry them around with me everywhere, and I just, you know, sit down in a random place <laughs> and just start putting them in my beard. That's, that's something we're definitely going to do there at if Running we're gonna, Con. We're going to do it there. So you'll want to do it there. Yeah. <laughs> there's yeah, there's, there's, that, there's should, that picture, by the way. I still have video on my iPod uh, of you shaking all those out, saying, <laughs> I threw them on the ground. <laughs> uh, you should totally Wait, just was, walk up to This was all somebody. at a park, too, in a public park. <laughs> That yeah, we're just yeah. doing this. We just blasted pony music the entire night. Hey, yes. it, it was it was brilliant. Hey, it Shamrock, you should really cool. just like have so, those things in your beard and walk around and then just shake them on somebody and just be like, "You've been bearded," and then walk away. <laughs> You've been bearded. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so that is a that is a portion, a small portion of what you can expect if you come to one of my room parties at the All right, <laughs> Jesus. How long does it take you? to Stick those in to stick a hundred honey of those skewers oh, in your uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to think now. Now nobody that's in here was with me when I was at uh, the different meetup. When we were at the one here in Fort Scott, um, man, how long did that take? I kind of lived it up a little bit. You know, there's a, there's a little bit of showmanship that goes along with it, but uh, maybe um, ten ten fifteen minutes, maybe. Oh, that's fast. Yeah, maybe maybe fifteen twenty. Because you you have to go quick because um, the weight overall will just start to stink and they'll start to fall. So part okay. of it is getting them in quick, but also <laughs> where you place them and how you interweave them to lay on top of each other so they don't all fall out. It's an art. But uh, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> have you stabbed yourself at all? <laughs> um, Those actually, things are sharp. There's uh, <laughs> it's yeah. dangerous. <laughs> yeah, there's. Uh, I'd, I'd say the two main things that have happened is um, when you take them out, the, my beard is really itchy because it's wood. It's all wood that's in there. Oh, beard is made of wood, <laughs> and so no. Oh <laughs> yes, my god! But, but uh, <laughs> the main thing is that if I um, if there is any knots in my beard, like. It really, it can really hurt, and it can really mess up the whole operation because they won't stick in because they'll get caught and they won't go in any further. And so, if you try and pull it out, you risk all of them flying out. So that that's the hardest part: pushing them through the knots in your beard and stabbing yourself. That's what hurts the most. It's like a strange game of of reverse Jenga. Jenga. It's exactly like Jenga. <laughs> Except yeah, this sounds like, like a lock-off shot. We just lock a camera off on you and uh, speed it up. <laughs> just, like, do it in 30 seconds. <laughs> it's sort of like those ones where you see the guys uh, stand in front of a camera for like a whole year and they take one picture every day or whatever, you know, and they show right, how right. much they change or grow their beard or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> frame by Keep frame. doing that with progressively more skewers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I couldn't tell you. Uh, it's it's fun. <laughs> Have any of you any of you been to BronyCon before? 
I have never. This is my very first con ever. Yeah, no. I no, say I've here. been to cons before, but I've never even been to. Uh, I've never been to New York before. Oh wow! So. I've been to New York before, but not. Yeah, not. Uh, not not anything like this. And what's funny is that Sham and I are both going to be dry. Well, we're going to be in one car. We're going to drive the entire way. Driving from uh, Kansas to yes. Ohio. How long does that take? Twenty-two hours. Woo! Hey. Well, well, hold up, guys. Yeah. You're actually coming here, leaving your car yeah. here, and then we're taking my car with the sound system and watching ponies all the way there. <laughs> we're our our overlay is in uh, is in Columbus. So are you guys taking a camera with you? You guys can just film your journey. Yes. Yes, we are. I'm going to have. Um, I've got a 1080p uh, camera on my phone, and I'm going to be blogging. I'm going to be blogging the trip. By no means. Uh, yeah, and should be live stream that. Yeah. Um, well, we're gonna. We'll we'll see what happens. Can I look at the footage when you guys are done? Yeah, totally. Gonna, it's going to be up on YouTube. We're going to swag the yeah. whole way. Yeah, I want to see it. Yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to get an actual. Um, uh, because my my school unfortunately won't let me use, uh, won't let me take their cameras uh, over the summer break, or I would, uh, uh, because I was involved with some other people working on uh, possible brony documentaries as well. And our whole take on it was to just do a a, a road trip. <laughs> that was the whole idea. Yeah. Get an RV and travel across the United States. Just go all just the whole perimeter <laughs> and uh, just go place to place and just drive and just the experience of living in an RV with, you know, five or ten bronies for four weeks or whatever, you know. <laughs> Ooh, I can smell it from here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it sounds like the Ken Kesey experiment back in the 60s. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. but Well, they were doing a lot of LSD, but it was kind of the same <laughs> idea. <laughs> It's it's the same for us. It's just ponies instead. Right. So there's a documentary about it on on Netflix about Ken Kesey and the you know they're doing a lot of LSD and they had their their magic their magical bus that they went from Oregon to New York and back. Yeah. Yeah. It was ponies uh, are LSD. Yeah. <laughs> are LSD. Well, they are pretty psychedelic. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> True Man. facts, pastel ponies. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sure if you know if on the bus happened today, their my, my little pony would be playing on the monitors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. Couple questions I see here in the chat room: How many remixes do you expect to be made of the bits of the documentary put on YouTube within a month of its release? And I would say probably a lot. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, will we be using fan music in the documentary or writing our own scores, maybe get musicians from the show itself? I think there's going to be a combination of our own scores and some fan music. Uh, we are kind of looking at all that right now and, and going to be contacting some of the, some of the fans. And I've been making a, a massive list of kind of the best music uh, that's out there. And then another question here about, uh, I know more than likely you will be actually be spending more then you collect. A lot of this is coming out of your pocket, but will any of the funds go to charity? And uh, the answer is, yeah, we probably will need to spend a little more than we collect. Hopefully not, uh, if we do our jobs right. But I don't anticipate there will be a lot of extra. We're, we're really putting the you know, making every dollar stretch as far as possible, putting the money into this product, making it the best we can. And uh, But there, there are some opportunities, uh, like I mentioned earlier, that... Um, uh, for charity and the, where charity is involved. So. Uh, just a question with the amount of money you're getting from Kickstarter and whatnot. Are you having any sort of thing where you're going, we're going to set up so we get the best camera footage possible first with the money, then we're going to go through these things, or we're going to get the best sound thing first, then we'll focus on camera? So what's the um, order of quality or really well, interesting things uh, in? <laughs> It's about story first. Yeah, it's, for me, it's story. How many of the story. best stories can we go and can we put into this thing? So we're going through hundreds and hundreds of emails, reading every single one, reading everybody's story, then as a group, reviewing them and saying, okay, which stories do we want to put into this? And then it becomes a question of what can we afford? And obviously, in the last week, that has increased from, well, we can go to a couple people's houses, plus do the BronyCon. To like, okay, now we can do a couple more, and we can do a couple more, and so 
Um, it's really the quality of what uh, uh, of the documentary isn't necessarily about the 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 look because it's going to be good and it's going to sound good already. We, you know, we built that factor in. Now it's about what is the content. What's the best content we can put in there? Mm-hmm. Um, Next, <laughs> speaking of uh, speaking of different projects. Um, besides the music community, there's also been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of uh, radio plays that have been done as well. There are a couple of shows that I stream. Um, one based off of called the Vinyl Scratch Tapes. If uh, you two have heard of the that, uh, it's basically what I- a what if story of Vinyl Scratch. And Octavia, two of the background ponies from the show, what if they made had their own radio station? <laughs> and they, it, it's really, it's really a fun, funny ordeal. And and uh, the, the whole, the whole fanfic itself has been turned has been turned into a turned into like an actual radio station. I know Sham does parts in it, and then I stream it, and it's gotten quite a fan base for it. And uh, we have some really good, high-quality voice actors that go with it. Um, I know, unfortunately, them, uh, most of those people will not be at BronyCon, but what I've told them to do is um, I've said, well, why don't you just give me a little a little voice, a little file of uh, everyone's voice saying what they do and what they're part of, basically plugging the show. And I will, um, and I will play that at BronyCon for them. Great. Yeah, you know, we certainly haven't ruled anything out at this point, but though mm-hmm. obviously because of you know what we're doing as a visual medium, we're going to tend towards the things that are you know fascinating and interesting to look at. So yeah. a radio play is a little kind of on the edge there. Okay. Um, but yeah. again, we have not ruled anything out. We are talking about everything, so this is right. yeah. come up in our discussions. Yeah. Um. Well. I, uh, I I I think that the main thing that was interesting about that is that, um, and this this sort of relates to MLP as a whole, and I'd like to hear what you guys think about this sort of thing. Is that um, there are so many medium uh, media that um, are either undiscovered or are um, sort of have been buried in the past that people are starting to use in different ways um, with MLP. And uh, when QCOM mentioned the radio play, that's something I mentioned to radio broadcasters when I talk to them in, in different, on different stations and different things and in um, different job interviews and stuff. And I say, you know, here's this cool show. And then, look, there's just regular people making these radio plays about it. And they say, wow, really? You know, radio plays don't hardly exist anymore. Um, because of the way that the radio broadcasting culture is now, uh, with mainly music and, and, and talk show stuff, that radio plays are something of the, the past with the uh, War of the Worlds and, you know, that kind of stuff of the way back. And, Orson uh, Welles, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you whose heart you have with that is John DeLancey. Um, <laughs> he's been involved in doing a number of radio plays, and, and uh, it's something that, that he loves. Yeah, it's it's a great thing because you know, uh, in the at least in the broadcasting um, sort of sort of world we talk about, what's the best way uh, to use your medium? And I guess you could apply that to to all the the different mass media. But um, you know, one of the things is with TV. Obviously, it's like you have pictures. You don't have to rely as much on um, your imagination or on that kind of stuff. You have to. You have all these things you can use that are tools that you have. You want to use visuals more. You don't want to have someone walk up to somebody and just stand there and talk for 20 minutes. You want to have other stuff going on in the background and you know all this other stuff that you can do. But with radio, you get to, you get to make that person um, make believe all of that stuff. You know, you, it's all about how you say things and... and donations and all this stuff that you focus on more that in TV gets lost because you're not thinking about it as much. You're focusing more on the visual aspect. And, uh, but that, that aspect of a radio play has definitely died a lot. 
um, just because people don't don't use radio for that anymore. They have television now, so they don't need it as much. Or they I mean, ra- radio. I think radio plays are are more powerful in a lot of ways than film because you know the, the, the film is the, you know the visuals are playing in your imagination, and it's. I mean, how can you compete with that? Your imagination right. is is so amazing. You know, late at night listening to a radio play with the lights off. It's amazing. You know, yeah. dark. It's That's- just. Magical. He does reference War of the Worlds. Yeah, it's amazing. That's what I. Uh, <clears throat> but that's that's what I thought when I when I started to get into this and say, wow, you know, there's these radio plays. Gosh, I haven't. I don't see those anymore. You know, that's like it was just uh, amazing that people would take that and apply it to something like this. You know, with ponies, something that you think, well, where did that come from? Where did somebody get that idea from? What right. have you guys seen that as much? Have you have you been around to enough sectors of the fandom that you're starting to see stuff? Where you're like, man, that's really interesting that they came up with that for ponies. I mean, I've seen some mashups where people have taken, you know, they've they've revoiced the show um, with other TV shows, which is hilarious. I've seen a lot of stuff like that, or or people have revoiced the show themselves. Um, but I don't know. I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any radio plays. I don't know. How about you, Mike? No, I have not seen that yet. But uh, just I've seen the music there. videos and so stuff. much. <laughs> it's, well, it's any, really... in, anything, in, anything that doesn't have to be radio plays. Any, anything. What stuff have you found that's been interesting to you that maybe you may mention or something in the documentary? But stuff. I mean, this is all stuff relevant to the. To the I'm, I'm, I'm really loving the music and the remixes and just the creativity there. Also, you know, the art is such a such a, a big factor. It's harder to do things like fan fiction and such because, again, we're we're a visual medium. Um, right. So, you know, but obviously, it's there's so much out there. It, it, it's it's amazing. I like some of the memes and stuff. I like the plushies. Those are yeah. cool. The plushies are cool. I love the plushies. Yeah, they're so well made. There's some really great Discord and, plushies. Which I think yeah, is hilarious. <laughs> which, <laughs> so I'm glad that's where the conversation went. Just plushies. gonna throw that out there. Oh no! Here's my here's one of my favorites. There's the John Delancey song. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's, funny. <laughs> that's John. We John, we play John that over and over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> I've been tormenting him with it actually. John Delancey is a bro. Is, is the, the Google song. it. You should play it on the. Can you play it on the radio yeah. right now? Let's I can play it. Can. Well, what's it called? Play it. <laughs> Go um, get it. The John I'm Delancey song. Second here. John Delancey is a bro. The, the oh wait bro. wait wait here we go. Yeah, it's, here, it's John. Here let's Delancey. Find it one second. Let me see if I can. So, bro. Um, so it'll be so it's so worth it. Oh here it is speaking here it is. Of, here we speaking go. Of, uh, speaking of songs related to. Uh, to him and his character. Um, Damos, if you're playing it, stop it, because Cucumber's going to play it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm Q-Con's sorry. Gonna play it on the feet. Give uh, me the link, Damos. Hey, give, give him the link to it. Give me the link. So, I'll, have oh, you guys right. heard... Have, um, well, first, I guess, have you guys heard of Eurobeat Brony? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> so, uh, assuming my next question, uh, have you have you heard the Discord song, and what do you think of that one? I'm trying. I think I know which one you're talking about, and I do like that one. Uh, someone, someone took the took that song, and they mixed it with um, the intro theme song to Pokemon. Wait, can we play it? I haven't heard that. But, oh, here it is. I have it. Can here, you play here it. I want to hear it. Um, now, in order for now, we won't we won't be able to hear it unless you actually go onto the stream itself. Oh, okay. Or I, I like play the, it. I like the European Brownie Discord song. The Living Tombstone remix, though. Yeah. Which I've got that too. Here, let me just clear this list. Here, uh, okay. Here, I'll show you the um. I'll link the the Pokemon one so you guys can hear that one too. Here, okay, guys. Let me Fred, go. That works. Uh, Second link. Oh yeah. <laughs> like a pro. Yeah. I'm take that song. Um, in relation yeah, I'd post to radio, Skype. <laughs> in relation okay, to the uh, radio stuff, um, I'm pleased to say that next month I 
will be a part of a, a one hour, three times a week brony show uh, on live radio. Uh, I'll be hosting it with someone with uh, the Derpy Hooves news uh, and the, the news website over there. And uh, uh, I kind of hope to to tie in with Celestia Radio, so don't don't feel threatened by that at all, Sham. Oh, hey, aren't you aren't you doing it not only on the internet, but actually doing it over actual radio? That's what he just yes. said. Yes, yeah, actual yeah, yeah. radio Sorry. and uh, Cirrus <laughs> satellite radio. Yeah, yeah. We've, Sorry, I, we've I got awesome. we've got another guy in uh, in Colorado that I'm I'm vetting to uh, uh, to possibly take a take a spot with us as well. Who does? Um, they do community uh, real life radio, non non commercial, um, and uh, and he does he does some hours too with actual Brony music and stuff. And that's what I like to do with independent radio is to try and get on actual radio stations and, and broadcast this independent music because it is amazing stuff. I mean it's it's cool. That's what Celestia Radio's mission is to try and uh, all pony all the time. You know, get get all the get all the pony music out there because yeah. it's really cool. But uh, yeah, so there's. There's the link to that one Discord song. I posted that in the Skype. And then, and uh, Q, you are you want, playing? Yeah, if you want me, if uh, you want to take, everyone had to take a quick break or something, I can. I'll, I'll play this real quick. Um, here is from Hard, is it Hergist? Hergist Ridge, the John Delancey theme song. Awesome. And it's playing right now. Let it rip. All right. Also, on a side note, seeing as we're off air anyway, uh, the uh, with the radio station thing, I'm, I'm actually working with two other military bronies, one of them being the one I was telling you about earlier. The other one is uh, a retired Master Chief Gunnery Sergeant out of the Marines. Ooh. Okay. Where's the, where at? Where's the location? Uh, she lives in Seattle or the Seattle area. Oh, okay. In Washington. I, I know we're doing a big trip to Arizona, and there's a military brony there specifically that we're going to fo- uh, follow. And one of the things, the reason we're putting out a call for military bronies in, in Arizona is we want to do kind of a meetup of military bronies with this guy. Right, okay. Which would be interesting. Okay. Um, do you want to go back on air? <laughs> That's, that song is hilarious. Yeah, I mean, love that. <laughs> do you want to go back on air, guys? Or? Kind of catchy, right? Huh? Yeah. Whatever you want, we're good. Okay. <laughs> and we're back. What's up? Just What's like up? that. Just like Just that. Like that. Yeah. John John Delancey called me the other night. He was with a friend. He goes, well, "What's that song again? You got to tell me. I want to play it for my friend." <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's, that's so that's awesome. awesome chat. <laughs> yeah, um, like I said, yeah, Delancey. I am just a freaking huge fan of his, and I'm so glad that he was able to give a promo uh, of a, of our station for us. Great. That's, that um, needs to get played more often. Did you yeah, play yeah. it? Yeah, I play. I played it uh, earlier this okay. evening. Have you have Have they heard it? Have you guys heard it? Well, I can I play it know. if you want me to. Uh, your Your quality is awful, Damus. Um, My quality is <laughs> awful. Your quality is <laughs> yeah, awful. I'll play, I'll play it right now. How about that? All yeah, right, I haven't heard it. Can you play it so that we can hear it in the in in here in the oh, call in the Skype call? Um, uh, no. Unless they're listening, are you guys listening on? No, just no, the Skype. We're listening on the but Skype I can call. switch over to the Flash. Yeah, no, I can't play it in the Skype call. Okay, I'm gonna switch over and listen. I can do it. That's beyond my power. I can, I can do, do it. it in the Flash. I have in the, the power. Left your radio. There's a my cloud name. on the left that says "Play in Flash." Okay. Yes. You might want to. You might want to tune out to us for just a second, <laughs> since you'll hear it delayed. Oh, I hear it. No, I'm in the. I'm in the cloud. I'm in the Celestia radio. Okay, so you can find a ten second delay or something. Yeah, there's like a there's a good ten second delay just because our isn't our server like based in like Nova Scotia or something? <laughs> it's in it's in Germany. I'm oh, sure. that's right. Yeah, it's so strange. There's like this ten second delay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nor even normally though. Um, there can be well, there can be quite a bit of a delay. It just depends on uh, 
different stations. But um, I yeah, feel why like don't I'm you... living in the future when I hear this? <laughs> <laughs> like ten seconds ahead of life. It's weird. <laughs> Once yeah. again, living in Australia, I get this twenty second delay. So there's an extra ten seconds after. Oh, nice, nice, <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah. always hard to interact with the chat. Because you'll you'll say something and then you know a whole page of text down you'll get a response to it and you won't even remember what you were talking about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and play yeah. it, uh, playing it right now. Yeah. So if you guys listen. That's awesome. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big thanks to uh, Zabranky slash uh, Andrew of uh, Bronicon for getting that out to us. Yeah. And um, since we've already, since we sort of already know, I, I think we're supposed to be getting. Maybe something from um, Lauren Faust or... Uh, yeah, something from Faust. Or um, yeah. Tara or... What would be really great if, is if we had something from Nicole Oliver, since it is Celestia Radio and she is Celestia. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, it's, that's that's my goal. I was like, man, if we can get, if we can get Nicole on here to do uh, my faithful students or my faithful listeners, you mm-hmm. know, that would, be, that would be fantastic. We've also got the... Uh, the lovely Stephen Magnet has volunteered to do quite a, quite a bit of stuff, I think, um, as well. That's um, uh, what's his actual name? <laughs> I don't know. Stephen Magnet. <laughs> nobody, nobody knows. <laughs> no one knows his name. Is Stephen Magnet. That is incredible. You're asking for a based off his in character name. Yeah, you know he does snips and he does uh, the the water dragon guy. Yeah. Stephen Magnet. Yeah. One episode. Stephen Magnet. <laughs> you need to come back and see three as a cameo. Uh, let's see. Yeah, His name is uh, Lee Tucker. Tucker. Yeah. Tucker. There you go. Something. Yeah, it's Tucker. Anyway. Yeah. He was really excited to do a bunch of stuff, so he was he seemed to get really involved, and and we were happy to have Delancey do stuff too. So we yeah. we love working with those guys and <laughs> and get. Stuff well, like the ni- that. the nice thing about John is he come because he comes from Star Trek, he understands a fan base, and and so he kind of comes into this. Just with a natural understanding, and, and he's been working really hard, uh, which is interesting to me, to kind of um, make the Trek fan base aware of the Brony fan base and how similar they are, and kind of convert some of those uh, the, the Trek people to to uh, to My Little Pony. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, actually on that <laughs> topic. I do have one question: yeah. Is John Delancey has he made any comments about how some things? are different between the two fandoms? Like, there's just one feature of Star Trek that completely doesn't match up with the Pony fandom? Actually, no. I- I've only heard him say... Uh, the only difference I heard him say is the, the Bronies are more colorful. Yeah, that's what I heard, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I have heard uh, him mention a number of similar things. So, in a good way. But that'd be a great question to ask him when we're filming him at BronyCon when he's on the panel. You guys should, guys should ask him that. I kind of live in a different continent, so it's kind of hard for me. To <laughs> oh. okay. It's okay. Slider, slider, well, write, we... chat, write it down in chat, and I will make sure that gets asked. Sweet. Yeah. We'll be yeah, there. That's, that's, we're going to be... That's one, that's one thing, too, is when, I, when I'm there at BronyCon, I have almost nothing pony-related for him to sign. All I've got is Star Trek books, and it's all about <laughs> it. That's all I have for him to sign. <laughs> I don't. Think, I don't think he'll mind either way. <laughs> have him sign at Discord in your Star Trek books. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Just have him sign non-pony, non-Star Trek related stuff. He'll love it even more. <laughs> right. yeah. Thanks for the sandwich. <laughs> Random. He's got a great sense of humor. You probably could get him to sign all kinds of stuff. Oh man! <laughs> Bring up a book about protecting trees and could you sign this <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> I've, have I've you figured, heard the I've good word of jesus <laughs> i figured there'd be a good chance uh that bronicon would probably pick up some trek people and uh 
some, you know, quite a few other folks who aren't necessarily bronies, but follow the, uh, uh, the voice actors and actresses and, and, uh, want to be there just to see them anyway. And why not? <laughs> uh, it seems to me the brony community would be, uh, very welcoming. Of, oh, of definitely. So. Definitely. But I do have a quick question about John Delancey. Um, it's it's kind of funny because I've been watching a couple different um, shots of him at like different Star Trek conventions, people with cameras and that uh, filming him. And someone will ask something about, oh, well, Discord, okay? And he kind of embarrassingly say, well, just kind of waves it off. I mean, he does answer the question, but then quickly goes back into uh, Star Trek. So I kind of got the impression of... Um, well, he wasn't really into that kind of stuff, or he was just kind of he just kind of did it and was whatever. No, no, uh, I don't. I don't think so. I just think he doesn't want to. He doesn't really want to fix mix the two fandoms. I, I mean, well, yeah. it's just I think you want to be respectful. If if a yeah. bunch of people came to pay to hear about Star Trek, you don't want to necessarily get off on to another subject. Okay. Um, you know, just for the few people, I think he would like to mix the fandoms, but. Also, you want to be respectful of the people who mm-hmm. paid to to hear specifically about Star Trek or Doctor Who and that, or whatever it be. Yeah, yeah, well said, Mike. It does make me happy that he is fully in the the whole thing with the with the documentary and everything. It's uh, it's really awesome. It yeah, bro. Uh, you know, definitely, uh, and also Lauren Faustin and Tara Strong, and and they're not just lending their names to it. We've sat in their homes and talked about all the issues and talked about, you know, what exactly we're going to put into this documentary and, and what things do we need to be aware of that they know about that we're, we being kind of new to this need to know about. And, and they're actively involved. That is really That's awesome. That's good. <laughs> it's a little intimidating, too, because it's the great Lord Faust. <laughs> You're like, okay, Wow. So I'm a little <laughs> starstruck, I have to say. Yeah, that's awesome, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, like 90% of my where, shows I mean, that I used to watch were made by her. <laughs> that's that's everybody. It, it's, so, it's so wonderful, too, about this show that a lot of the writers, a lot of the editors on this show have built up our childhoods, for the most part. Like, um, I know one of them did... Uh, uh, my life as a teenage robot. Another writer did. Um, I know Amy Keating Rogers did a whole bunch of, tar- of the Powerpuff Girl um, storybooks that a lot of them were were done. A lot of episodes on that were done off of them. And um, I can't think. Wasn't one of them like one of the writers for Johnny Bravo as well? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'd have to look into it. But Tons of things. Tons of things. Yeah, it's it's been it's it's just great to have so much talent all rolled into one thing, and look what it's done. <laughs> so, uh, in terms of um, in terms of the documentary, when you guys are at BronyCon, um, obviously you're gonna be you're gonna be going to the panels, you're gonna be out and about, you know, doing doing roving uh, roving stuff. Um, are you are you planning on doing um you know you you mentioned having the room set to the side maybe to have people come in and give their 10 or 15 seconds um are you planning on just setting up somewhere not necessarily setting up somewhere but just sort of like walking up to random people and sort of being like hey what do you think about this or what are you doing over here you know kind of stuff are you planning on doing any of that there may be a little bit of that not a lot because again we we're really planning out what we're doing and part of you know, the documentary is telling these individual stories of people that, you know, we've gone to their home before BronyCon, it's about their journey to BronyCon, and then we need to pay it off. So we'll be following those people specifically. Um, we There are some things at BronyCon that, you know, are on the schedule that we want to cover. Um, more of the, the kind of random questions and random interactions will happen kind of more in the controlled environment. It's really hard to interview somebody in in the middle of a huge, loud convention. So we want to have a, 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 a controlled environment where we can hear from those people. So we will be pulling people, like like you said, into that side room um, for some very specific interviews and very specific uh, information. Hmm. 
Um, just to ask here, um, how much time do you two have? Oh, right now? Well, yeah. Game of Thrones already started. Uh, a couple <laughs> minutes oh, ago. my God. Wait, I've actually, it's like one of the things I was thinking this evening. I was like, man, got to get my recording. Last episode of Game of Thrones this evening. <laughs> but it is, it is recording, so, so I'm good. Yeah, I, I got Hatfields and McCoys recording, so I'm good. <laughs> oh, cool. That was good. Yeah. I've only I, seen I like part that. one. Part series, that was good. Let's, let's, let's do another, like, 15 minutes, and then we're... Mm-hmm. We'll let you guys take over. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, chat, do we have any other questions to ask? Uh, let's see. Oh, I, I've, I've got one, actually, that I, that okay. I thought of. Um, and this is, this is sort of more of, a, of an individual, of individualistic questions. What, for each of you, um, is, your, is your favorite... And then your uh, most inspiration. Uh, let me say this right. Um, most most inspirationally derived uh, films. They can be documentary. They can be whatever. What's what's your favorite? Just that from a fan standpoint, and then from a uh, professional standpoint. What do you what which do you like the most from from both of you guys? I think uh, this is Mike. Uh, both actually the answer to both of those questions for me is, is Forrest Gump. I love Forrest Gump. I think it's like a perfect movie. I think great movies are when you see characters change over the course of the movie, all the storylines kind of wrap up, nothing's left hanging. And, and that is to me, that's a terrific movie. Uh, I like Forrest Gump, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I mean, I'm really, in, I'm probably my favorite film is, I'm gonna go with uh, with the bicycle thief. Um, I I I, uh, I love that film because it's it's you know it's 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 a slice of Italian life right after the war and it and it has a documentary feel and they used real real people within the town to tell the story so it was non actors it's almost a documentary in a way even though it's it's staged as a film so I would say that's um, that. Definitely, it ranks as one of my uh, my my top favorite films. Um, trying to think of whatever. There's so many movies that it's it's really hard to just pick one. I mean, I really like Night of the Iguana. It was a John Huston film. I mean, I like the classics. I go back right to the classics because they're the ones that have taught us everything. Um, I'm a big Orson Welles fan. Um, right. As far as far as documentaries, I love Errol Morris. Um, um, I like Nick Broomfield. Um, I'm trying to think of what other good ones that I've seen recently. I love the Banksy documentary. That's actually one of my favorite documentaries that has come out. I don't know if you guys have seen it, Exit to the Gift Shop. Mm-hmm. I thought that one was pure genius. Um, there's a couple really good documentaries that have come out about North Korea that I really liked. Um, the names escaped me. I saw them actually on Netflix. Um I'm trying to think of what other good ones that have really inspired me. Um, I like the, I like the Truckers documentary. Um, I don't know. What's your favorite documentary, Mike? Or do you have? Um, gosh, I can. I don't know. Actually, put me on the spot there. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, that's a good question. I think some of the same same ones you mentioned. Actually, I don't have. No, I do love the Michael Moore stuff. Uh, it does get carried away sometimes, but I, I, I love the whole kind of brash approach to it. It appears that we're having trouble with the call. Uh, cupcakes isn't necessary. I've I've read it. Uh, so what happens when Rule Thirty Four meets a cupcake? It's not necessarily Rule Thirty Four. I'm pr- I'm pretty sure it's, it's like not. Grim dark. Uh, I it's want to see the convergence of the two. That's why I just said tasteless. It falls under it falls under what what people in the fandom have deemed as grim dark, which is oh, where you somebody, take, okay somebody just yeah. mentioned it in the room. Okay, yeah. so I get where it. you you take the i the idea that essentially the idea is people take this image of of what does MLP you know stand for and what are all of its ideals and to sort of twist them and put them on their head essentially in a lot of ways you know see. 
what is what is the most hell bent opposite direction of characters you can take? So that's you know that's where some people go with it. Which in an artistic format, you know, if you're looking at it completely um, from that perspective, I guess that's okay. You know, I don't really have an opinion on it, but uh, you know, for for those that enjoy the show, a lot of people don't like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I had a quick question uh, from the chat. Uh, they were asking um, how much of an impact on social the the people uh, outside of the fandom do you expect will be hit by this? Our idea is, you know, uh, it, it it we want to serve. It's so hard to do this, but we want to serve two audiences. We hope that the Bronies are going to be. Um, happy with what we come up with and, and, and proud of what we come up with. But we've also heard from a lot of bronies who are like, I just want to be able to show this to my parents or my friend or, and have them understand me. And so to that end, we want it to be uh, attractive to a general audience mm -hmm. um, by the time that we get done. So, so that's a very difficult thing to do both, but, but we would mm -hmm. like to achieve both. I'll tell you with yeah. you with you guys doing this, I'm already proud. I'm just like you know, hey guys, these guys are doing this. It's amazing. So I'm already happy with it. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. That means a lot. Definitely. It means you, definitely. that that that's your cue to donate now, Demos. <laughs> if I had extra money, everything's going into the tank. <laughs> I know. Yeah. yeah, we're let's see. We're oh gosh, we're dollars away from two hundred and one thousand dollars. Dollars away. <laughs> dollars. Literally dollars. Dollars. That's if that. every person in chat donated one dollar, that is enough. That is more than enough to get past $201,000. Surely no expenses will be spared in this effort to fund this, this fundraiser. If that makes sense. Um, let's see. I was going to have another question related to the movie. Oh, um... My main my main reason for asking that question was to see um, if you guys had a difference in opinion on what constituted a movie for you that you really loved, and then one that where you thought, you know, this is something that's really good as a movie, because as as is with writing and with music and with you know any any medium. Um, you you learn very quickly that you lose a lot of the uh, the sort of um, uh, magic <laughs> that it is in a lot of a lot of stuff like film. Once you learn how to make one, well, and, I'll, I'll, and you start to watch movies and say, "Oh, I know this shot," and "Oh, that's a great shot there." They did this pan over there. I really like how that worked. You know, and you you don't get as lost in the movie anymore. <laughs> I'll let uh, Lawrence expand on this but i think for uh all of us the bottom line is if you tell great stories um it uh you, you know it doesn't matter about the the technical uh, you know qualities of the film as long as you're telling a great story yeah i mean it's like i mean you're talking about like when when we're watching or when we're making a film because i'm not sure I totally uh, the question you mean like from as well, an audience member or, uh, or in the filmmaking process well, when you're when you're an audience member and you are mm -hmm. a, you are a person who makes films, or right, or, yeah, or if you're in music, if you're listening to music, you know, and you're and you're watching and you and you're watching a movie, and instead of thinking, you know, oh man, that explosion was so cool, like wow, and then you're just thinking, oh man, I liked how the crane moved during that shot, you know, and and how they had, I bet they used this and this to make that explosion do this and this, you know, you start to right. analyze. Oh, analyze it you know pick right. it apart because you know how it's done right i mean i feel like when you're if you're the analytical part of your brain is on when you're in, you're in a theatrical experience as an audience member um i think that the film isn't really connecting with your audience i mean if you're analyzing and i think anyone can analyze it i think in I mean, it is amazing how savvy just your regular audience member is. I mean, people kind of have a pretty good idea how films are made. I think the the magic tricks are out there. You know, certainly you can go on YouTube and find out how to blow things up or how sequences are put together. So people are pretty savvy. But, I mean, I will pick films apart when I'm watching them, and I only do that if I'm bored. 
And I mean, that's why I love about the bicycle thief because it's you know it's the, it's the Italian neorealism. I hate to go back to it, but really, it had such a profound impact on me because it is shot in a, and in just the most basic way. There's nothing fancy about it. It is all story, and it is this guy's journey, and it, and it is all about and it centers around this bicycle. I mean, and it is amazing. And there's nothing. There's no, you know, there's the, the you know that. De Sica is not a cinema magician. He's not pulling, you know, crazy shots. It's just, it's just a heartfelt story that you 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 root for the character and you you want him to win, you know. And it's very simple. And that's to me, that's the beauty of cinema is when it's in its purity, you know. And that's where you have less to hide. And that's kind of that's where we're at. I mean, we don't, we can't hide. We're not going to hide behind any any explosions and i mean i have some friends that have made some big movies and they're literally like look when i get bored i blow something up you know and that's usually <laughs> about every every seven to ten minutes you know <laughs> but yeah i mean basically we have to the, the characters that we choose you know have to tug at your heart and have to make you go you know i like this person i understand this person's struggle and i see what they're trying to do and i and i see their obstacles and they're just like me you know and and i want them to be able to to get through it and i and i hope it works out and i'm going to sit here and watch it and root for them i mean that's the position that we're in so you know that's hello sorry that's mom late. oh <laughs> <laughs> just remembered I was supposed to call my mom. But <laughs> um, well, my parents are listening to this, so I'm sure. They're... Are they? Hi, mom. <laughs> uh, real quick, I want to say something. I just readjusted my thing, and now it is literally four dollars away. Oh wow! <laughs> awesome. Wait, Wait do I have four dollars? I need to check. Fred, what's the hundred dollar get you? Darn it! There is three dollars. Get a T-shirt, bitch. Oh, three dollars. Three dollars. Yeah. People in chat, three of you, three of you, donate one dollar. We can do this. That's one Starbucks. <laughs> oh yeah. Is, we can save Celestia <laughs> Radio. We got it. It's Sweet. I got three dollars. Dollars. If you guys make me readjust my thing to one oh nine dollars, I'm gonna rage because I hate readjusting these things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna donate a dollar right now. That's hilarious. I don't think you can even get a latte anymore for three dollars at Starbucks, isn't it? Like mm. my friends nicknamed that place six bucks, so for half of a latte. <laughs> you can't even get a dollar at McDonald's anymore for a coffee. I know, right? I think a cup of coffee, a small cup of coffee at Starbucks is like two bucks. It's crazy. Man. Those coffee people. Yeah. Craziness. I think we lost Mike. Did we lose Mike? <laughs> I'm back. I'm sorry. sorry, I had to. Oh, take Mike's, it. Uh, Mike's got, probably on a, a production call. Uh, we got back, two dollars. Two dollars. Two dollars, guys. We can do this. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh. Uh, do they need a link? I think I need to post a link in the chat. I think yeah, I'm, post a, post oh, I a link twice. I posted a, a link twice in chat. Well, I'm doing it again. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Stephen Ad is donating thirty-one dollars. Yay! That was my original donation. How about that? <laughs> All right, too he late. Is, he has matched. I just did three dollars. There it is. Three dollars. There it is. Three dollars, yeah. man. Yay. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Still working on my donation. Nice. <laughs> oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Hold up. You rock. Woohoo! <laughs> 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 Oh, curse you! Dude. I am very curious to see what we're going to end at because uh, I do know from getting private messages from people asking about the the three thousand dollar drawing from from Lauren Faust that uh, there may be you know quite a few uh, last minute uh, pledges here. Oh yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> All right, let's get so. to two hundred two thousand. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> No We're pressure. staying alive until we get to 202. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah, you guys, it's uh, it, what a what a what a great thing to to be able to say if you guys would have a, a total of of a quarter of a million. That's a good number. Yeah, it is. <laughs> We're getting there, and it's amazing, amazing. That, that would be, we, that we would put be... up the initial sixty, and it was so funny to watch the comments and people go, "They'll never get to 60. You know, <laughs> it's like, yeah. 
Yeah, we I mean, we're, we're at 60. Mike was sweating bullets. He's like, how are we going to make like, this thing? <laughs> it was just like, this is going to be rough. And I'm like, we'll, well do yeah, it, we'll it, do it. Exactly. But it's, it was going to be physically painful. Physically at 60, it's like, how can we even afford the plane tickets to get there and the, the equipment? And how are we going to do this? So so we've definitely, uh, it's a it's a big burden lifted knowing that we have some money and we can actually make a really cool thing now. Yeah, definitely. We are um, so glad to be a part of it. Absolutely. And absolutely. now I've donated, and it's at 201032. <laughs> nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, uh, oh, yeah, there it goes. 32, 201032. It is kind of addicting to watch this this thing. I do wake up <laughs> once in a while in the middle of the night and look at it and refresh. And refresh, refresh, refresh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I oh, know it's happened with a couple of other Kickstarters. Tim Schaffer, who did the uh, adventure game Double Fine sort of thing. Every time he did an interview, he'd just sit there and go, I've raised this much money during the time of the interview. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's, I remember that's... back when they first launched that. I was one of the first people to do it before they met the goal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Oh, whoa. Uh, because, if I yeah, well, it's funny. When John, when John get okay. John and Tara and Lauren, when they were on the radio, just, like, climbed like crazy, you know? And now Mike and I are like, yeah, we raised a little something. We, you know, <laughs> it's just Mike and I. <laughs> like, oh, yay. We're here, too. We're trying. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. We're not quite as sexy as, as those two, but or those three, but... Uh, <laughs> Hey, you know, we're like right. I said, we we are very glad to have you guys, have you two with us, because um, definitely last because uh, yeah, last Sunday it just seemed like it was all it was you know everyone was there for for Delancey and for Tara and for Faust and you two were sort of just pushed <laughs> into the background almost. It, it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's really great to have to have you two here and to explain what. You know, give us the whole idea of what the project needs to be. Yeah, well, thank, well, thank you so much. And we've certainly had the, you know, it's my opinion that, um, you know, we're responsible to the backers. So, you know, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. If people email me through Kickstarter, I respond to every single email. And uh, any question uh, that you have, if I can answer it, I will answer it. And then after he responds to it, he sends it all to us. So everybody's, <laughs> everybody well, sees it. I know, I know, Mike. It's been a crazy what two, three weeks. I've been talking to you back and forth, <laughs> try, trying to get this all set up. Yeah, it's uh, all of a sudden when you have like fifteen hundred emails, it's it's quite shocking to the system. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I I I can understand that completely. Yeah. What an endeavor. I wonder if but, you had uh, fifteen hundred emails, Qcom. <laughs> hey, I didn't email him that much. <laughs> Somebody's oh, Mike's impressed. a machine right now. He's got two yeah. keyboards going at once. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> like a G. Like it's a like G. someone needs a band in the chat there. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. He's having fun. <laughs> but uh all right, well, I think, uh, oh man, something about bacon. I don't know. Bacon strips. Bacon, bacon, something. bacon. It's hey, bacon. bacon. Bacon stripes. <laughs> it, it's bacon off. He stripes. spelled it stripes. wrong. Stripes. Hey, bacon strips. <laughs> hey, bacon it's strips. It's off that hey, fan video. <laughs> yes. Hey, uh, bacon stripes. Yeah. Epic yes. cupcake time. Epic, <laughs> epic cupcake Whatever. time. That's a good One video. Of those two. Okay, I'm <laughs> signing off and going to find out what the cupcakes are all about. <laughs> all right. <laughs> good luck. Well, that all was, right. uh, that you should record different. your reaction to that. That'd be good that for the day. Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, <laughs> I'll post it here in the Skype <laughs> chat. There it is, man. In the Skype chat. <laughs> epic pie time? Or, no, or epic. Uh, no, no, it's Cupcakes HD. Cup, cup, oh, God. Oh. <laughs> it is very <laughs> oh. catchy. It's a very catchy song. You'll love it. But yeah, don't eat. I like, I like Andrew WK, but I don't like the video that goes with that song. <laughs> I like the first ten seconds. You know, where yeah, the first ten seconds yeah. is great. And then but after don't that, eat. it's like, don't eat anything oh, because, well, yeah, you'll see. <laughs> funny, the, the guy who wrote that story, um, he's a really fun guy to talk to. Yeah. Nice. Was it Sergeant Sprinkles. Yeah, Sergeant Sprinkles. I I, I did an interview with him. Yeah, we interviewed him. <laughs> uh, <sighs> 
Well, gosh, it's too bad the rest of the, our staff couldn't join. Oh darn, slackers! <laughs> oh well. oh well, I think we've, I think, I think we've run the gambit. Honestly, yeah. Um, pretty much everything. Well, so you guys some... got some good jokes to tell. <laughs> oh man, they would have to be pony related. <laughs> or extremely. Yeah, are great. we going to see the My Little Pony comic at at BronyCon? That would be interesting. Hmm. hmm. I don't know. I'm not as. I don't know. Hmm. We're going to see... You make that we're... a Celestia Radio thing just to a call out now for it's, any... It's, it's <laughs> a yeah, just... There's yeah. a new niche for somebody. You can be the My Little Pony comic. I'll oh, man. <laughs> That's a thing. Well, we've got... I'm not even know, self, and I'm throwing out suggestions. It's great. They, they have... Uh, they do have the people who do the parody uh, videos, like you have... Um, uh, you've got Mentally Advanced, and then uh, uh, Friendship... <laughs> Or, uh, it's witchcraft. Yeah, friendship is witchcraft. Um, they all do parody videos of just the epi- They take the episodes and then they um, parody all the characters and the situations and everything. Um, and uh, so that's comedy. It's not necessarily stand-up. <laughs> not necessarily stand up, but, uh, but nice. Someone could get into that. I'm sure. There's just so much to see. So much to go watch and listen to. And to think, we've only had two seasons. I'm sure we're going to have another two or three. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to try to make this like we're gonna try to make this like Powerpuff Girls was, the longest-running cartoon series on Cartoon Network ever. <laughs> that, had six seasons. that had six seasons and a movie. I'm sure we can do the same. Yeah. <laughs> oh, on, it, it, it can go longer than The Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> it could. Let's do it. We can do it. <laughs> but, uh, I have every... Something Every interesting. In that. Do do we really want to make Simpsons feel that much more worse, though? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Perry. Oh. <laughs> low blow. <laughs> low blow. But uh, uh, something real interesting, though. Um, my friend said uh, he, he was saying something like, "The first season is like, hey, we're just trying to make a show that's you know uh, uh, unisex. It's for anybody, you know, uh, boy or girl. And then like the second season's like." Hey, bronies, we know you're out there. So he's like, third season's going to come out, and it's like, hey, this is for you, bronies, and no one else. <laughs> because it's just, they keep moving more towards all the, you know, references that we would only get, and the jokes and stuff like that. It's it's And more action-packed instead of just, we'll just talk this dragon out of here kind of thing. And so... It's really awesome to see it progress from what it was to what it is now. Uh, the the show itself. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, oh. That's my <laughs> cue. This has gotten pretty quiet now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, they're, they're watching the... Uh, yep. Cue the crickets. Um, well, is that it? Is that it for everybody, or? I think, uh, I think we've pretty well, uh, asked uh, everything. Uh, actually has a of. question in the chat there. Oh. Oh. oh okay. Stragglers! What are you doing? <laughs> Hurry up, people! Get in your last-minute questions. Go, uh, go, go. I'll, go, I'll, go, go, go. I really want to avoid the derpy thing. I really do. I can, Sorry. I'll, I'll ask it. I'll ask this <laughs> question. But I'll, I'll, I'll phrase it differently. I won't ask specifically about that. What do you guys think, um, at least from what you've seen or from what you've heard from, from the people who are making the show, about the different drama things that have happened within the fandom over stuff that Hasbro's done or you know stuff that the creators have done that has sort of been something that the fan base either has not liked or, you know, has caused much upheaval. What, what have you guys thought about those different things? For instance? For instance, and I'll go ahead and <laughs> use the specific now, uh, the Ditsy Do slash Derpy Hooves voice thing, which gets brought up a lot, but um, where they, you know, made it that was a basically a fan uh, wave character, you know, to 
Um, it was originally just a, a mess up, you know, uh, in the sure. in the art originally, you know, whatever, and uh, and they used it and sort of said, hey, you know, this is your shout out, guys, whatever. I, and I've then there heard, was this, you know, I've certainly heard of that, and um, but I think I'm a little confused about kind of where the where the Brony community stands on that and whether it's still split. Um, the whole deal with that was because. They in the show in the episode they named her Derpy, and a few people said well, Derpy. That that's 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 racist. That's ra- that's racist <laughs> against disabled people, and and I'm like, and all everyone else is like, what are they talking about? No, it's not. Yeah, but but uh, and, no, I I understand that. But yeah, the know, question is where? Okay, okay. I'm where sorry. do you think it stands now? Oh, where it stands now. So yeah. within within the community, um, I think the main thing that's happened that's originally everybody was sort of on the same side, saying, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, hey, this isn't really offensive. But after after Hasbro changed it, um, there were a lot of people that said, "How dare you? You know, how dare you change it from the what it was? That wasn't offensive." And they became more aggravated. And then a whole another group of people in the fandom said. Hey, don't pick on Hasbro. You know they're just doing it in their best interest. So there's this split between people who are dedicated in one part to the company who makes the show and the people who make the show, and saying they have to do what they need to do. You know, and whatever they they're just in it to say, hey, I love whatever they make, regardless of what it is. You know, and then there's another group of people who are really focused on that character, and they say, you know, that's not fair to the fans so it's so it's it's almost like the show versus the fans yeah. in a in a way you know it's like a catch-22 um, i think or it's something. still split. i think it's still split today but i don't catch think 20, you'll have anyone yeah. who will say oh yeah i think that was really offensive it's more of you know i think that was not offensive so much that they should keep it and other people are like hey uh i'm not i don't care that much about it you know sure that's kind of the, you know that's kind of the what our research had, was kind of showing. So w- it's good that we are up on kind of the same page. Um, I don't know how much of that we'll get into. You know, that's, that's kind of one of those things when you make the giant list of everything about this fandom, it's like, okay, where does that fall on the list? I don't, we, we haven't quite decided yet. Yeah. So there you go. There's that burning question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get it out just, there. Let the air out. <laughs> Let the air I know out. it's just a, it's just a it's such a it's so, it's it's like it's like that thing you know where people say don't talk about politics don't talk about religion yeah, it's, don't that's talk one about of those derpy. things it's one of those fandom things it's don't talk about split derpy. fan based stuff yeah, you know? yeah don't well, talk I, did, about- I did get tested the other day because we were having a meeting and and Tara and I was telling Tara Strong that we had been really researching a lot about. You know everything involving the fandom, and she goes, "Okay, well, if you know, if, if you've been researching, you're up to your speed. Tell me about Derpy." And so I did. Actually, don't, don't, I don't didn't know, know about Derpy. She so. is. She's the one. She's. I tell you what. She is the celeb authority on the fandom. Yeah. Because she is, uh, she is so active with that Twitter, and she just dives right in. She she gets right into the fandom, and she doesn't. You know. She doesn't care. She she gets right in with it and shows. Oh, and she's she's great. She knows exactly what's going on. You know, like it couldn't, she couldn't be better to have involved in this thing because she, oh, she she knows everything that's going on. Definitely, and we love it. We love that that people yeah. can send stuff to her Twitter and she'll post back either with a witty pic or a witty response or an audio recording. A lot of the time, <laughs> she'll post yeah. back the Twilight Licious song. Like that's just the kind of crazy stuff that we love. You know, that's mm. that's awesome stuff. Yeah, and that's another fun thing about her too is that next weekend we're doing a big request a thon for her charity that that she's a part of. Great. Okay. So Yeah, we're doing a uh a we might as well promo that on the radio yeah. while we're here. Go um <laughs> we're doing a we're doing a sixty hour marathon. Oh it's uh, sixty. Okay. We're gonna have wow. <laughs> we're gonna have live people on for sixty hours uh over next weekend. It's gonna start Friday evening at um, 4 p.m. Eastern, and it's going to go until, oh, what would that be, Monday morning at 2 a.m. Eastern, er, no, that's not right. 
4 a.m. Eastern. Um, and uh, Pony Toast is going to be on for 24 hours straight. <laughs> he has made a <laughs> commitment to do that. He's uh, he is taking it as a challenge. About it. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, he's taking Are it as a challenge. I know. And That's why I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'll be on I'm Saturday doing like eight. And, I'll be on Saturday evening and Sunday evening, um, or Sunday afternoon until Monday morning. So I'll I'll have the very end of it. But um, I'm only gonna be on like on Sunday Monday. morning, probably early Sunday morning till Sunday afternoon till you get on sham. Then I'll go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll have uh, uh, some of the other guys come in as well, different times. And uh, but it's it's for the. Um, uh, let me see if I can actually find her name. Uh, Kiki Kiki yes. Fun. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. For the Kiki uh, Cancer Fund, and uh, it actually—it's uh, a good thing we're doing it now because it actually ends on the fifteenth, I think, of June. Think June fifteenth is when it ends. Yeah. Um, and uh, so we are—we're going to be raising funds for that. Anything you—you uh, you would just donate normally to uh, to Celestia Radio, like you would through our PayPal, and anything we collect in that sixty-hour period. Um, we're going to to lump it all together and donate directly to the um, uh, to the fund. And the great thing is, if it's over five hundred dollars, they will match it um, on their website, the uh, <laughs> the, the awesome. fund website. So um, we're hoping we can at least get that much. I really hope we can. I think we can, um, and uh, really look forward to doing that because you know it's something that uh, I I recognize something as a really good act. You know, for Tara to take her celebrity and really use it for something really meaningful, and um, we're just trying to reciprocate that and uh, and and you know keep the buck moving, so so to speak, and uh, and we like doing this kind of stuff. So um, uh, that's we hope everybody listens in and and has some fun as our DJs become mm-hmm. exasperated <laughs> and um, and uh, on the on the brink of insanity <laughs> and. Uh, and you'll hear us droll on with with our crazy commentaries as the as the night runs on and we burn the midnight oil. So uh, that'll be next week. So and Tara, uh, Tara, if you're listening, which I don't know if you are, but it'd be so awesome if you just sort of snuck on and said hi. <laughs> that would be great. That would be cool. Hi, Tara. <laughs> that would be that would be awesome. Or or anyone, anyone of you know whatever. <coughs> Nicole. That'd yeah. be like Roger. <laughs> <laughs> that would that would make everyone's day. <laughs> yeah. Shamrock, you can uh, count me in on that big whole sixty hour thing. I want to give a couple hours. Oh yeah, definitely. I I had already planned on you doing so. Oh well, thank you for volunteering. <laughs> Whether you want to, or you not. were voluntold. <laughs> yes, you. yes. So, uh, I will do it. <laughs> Celestia commands it as your uh, benevolent overlord. Um, hey Sham, if if you want, I could perhaps maybe attempt. We might have um, we may have some people join in some Skype calls and stuff too. Yeah, uh, we're gonna be doing we're definitely gonna be doing call-ins and co-hosting and all that kind of stuff because um, because it's yeah. gonna be, you know, I I can talk. You know, I was uh, my my debate. You know, team called me Mister Filibuster because I can talk forever, but uh, yeah, even I run things <laughs> to say. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. But, uh, well, well um, I think that I think nice that record. covers it. We've been on for almost three hours. Yeah. Any any final comments from uh, from anybody in the call? Well, th- this is Mike. I just want to really thank everybody who supported the documentary. Um, we hope to make you proud. Awesome. Thanks well, so I'm much, sure you guys. Enjoy. And again, well, thank you. S- yeah. Cider, you want to say anything? Um, not that I can think of off the top of my head. <laughs> okay. G'day, mates. Um, um, <laughs> any words you want to hear in a show in accent? No, but we'll you just go uh, flush that toilet for us. Do <laughs> <laughs> no, a crocodile Dundee for us. <laughs> Say this oh, is a knife. Say this <laughs> is a knife. <laughs> this is All a right, knife. Paradise. We need yeah. you to say it. <laughs> this is a knife. This is a knife. I see you played knifey spoony before, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah.
<laughs> oh. Well. Uh, um. Thanks, guys. And thank you yep. so much, Warren and Mike, for joining us tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. Thank um, you. Pleasure to having you guys on, and uh, nice, Catch nice you meeting you. It was an yes. honor. We will, we will be definitely there. I, I encourage you guys to come to the best uh, room party, uh, which will be mine. Yeah, and I, uh, <laughs> just follow the guy with the speaker vest. Yes, <laughs> most and a gigantic hanging. beard with the barbecue skewers. Yes, I've seen the speaker vest. I've actually seen the photos of it. It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> I love. Oh yeah, that. we got. I remember getting. Yeah, we yeah. we talked about the speaker vest. We got that. It's amazing. Yeah. It's it's taken me a year to build, so it's. Uh, to get it to work right, and uh, I'm so glad to have it working perfectly for BronyCon. Hell, yep. we'll be blasting. Yes, we'll be okay. blasting. Uh, John Delancey's a bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, talk to you later. All right, talk All right. Later. Bye, you guys. Thanks so much. Bye. See ya. Bye. Thank you. That was amazing. That was, was incredibly fun. Oh yeah.